Welcome to the Highland Park Lawn Bowling Club and the pinnacle of the lawn bowling season here in the nation's capital. It's the 92nd G Governor General's Tournament. Hi everybody, Dan Mooney alongside 2011 National Junior Champion Christine Shuknick. And Christine, this is uh, one of the pinnacles of the lawn bowling season here in the nation's capital and in the province of Quebec as well. Yes, it is. It's Ontario versus Quebec here playing today. Ontario versus Quebec. These two teams have worked their way through a series of playdowns, not only to get to this day, but uh, how difficult a task is it to get to this tournament? It is difficult because you're not just playing against one other team. It's multiple teams you're having to beat to get just here and then even here you have to play against the other province before you can win let's take a look at team quebec they are very strong coming into this one that's annie morissette uh, as a skip sandra mitchell celia roussel and veronique collard uh, had a reasonably easy road to get to this upcoming game in it and uh, the rose bowl is going to be awarded to the team with the best record over the two games they play today yes exactly between the provinces yes between the provinces so that is quebec let's take a look at team ontario tessa mckechnie margaret sutton heather stevens and trisha robertson and they have uh, a little bit of a home court advantage don't they, they they do they're from here they're from highland park they're homegrown here let's talk a little bit about the conditions uh, how are the greens today they look pretty good they've been running fairly well from what I can tell watching other bowlers play apparently they're running about 10 on the stimp with all the rain that we've had over the last little while they're not nearly as quick as they were if they were able to dry out a little that will play into the way both teams take on this Governor General's Tournament and the Rose Bowl Final coming up after the break. Don't go anywhere, folks. You can only see it here on Rogers TV. Gabriel Pizza, proud supporter of local sports. Gabriel Pizza, home of the bigger, better pizza. Now available online at gabrielpizza.com. Welcome back to the Highland Park Lawn Bowling Club and the coin toss has taken place for this Rose Bowl final between Team Ontario and Team Quebec in the 92nd Governor General's Tournament. And these ladies going for the Governor General's Rose Bowl and pretty pristine conditions. Dan Mooney along with uh, Christine Schicknick and uh, this is one of the most prestigious events in the lawn bowling calendar in the nation's capital on a biannual basis. It'll move to Montreal next year. Quebec will get to host. But every two years since 1928, this tournament has been going on. That's quite a legacy. It really is, yeah. It's been a, quite a long time. And the ladies, the Governor General's Rose Bowl presented in 1993 to allow uh, ladies an opportunity to play for <laughs> actually this is a big time championship is it not it is how big well you gotta play against other teams to get here Dan. you can't just walk in you can't just show up and say i'm gonna play today you need to play against the other teams who want to make it here to win the trophy to win and represent the province now what you're going to be seeing over the next while our trial ends and team ontario won the toss so they get the opportunity to set the jack they do and, and these are trial ends here so they're not going to keep the bowls on the green you'll see shortly they'll throw the bowl and then they'll take it away now they've got it on a line is that the outside of the line or is that the middle of the court that is the middle so it should be lined up with the number two here since we're on green number two here and not sure what's going on 
Ontario, consisting of Tessa McKechnie, she's the skip, Margaret Sutton is the vice, Trisha Robertson the second, and Heather Stevenson lead. Yeah, this Quebec. is Heather coming up right now to throw her first bowl. We'll see what she does. Now these bowls are weighted on one side. They so, are. So she's coming with the inside turn, trying to get it to the jack. And these trial ends are effectively allowing you to see the way the greens are rolling and to get your weight down, I suppose. That's exactly it. Um, the greens change from green to green. Sometimes they're more straight, sometimes they're more wide. And so you want to see how much width you need to throw your bowl to make it to curl back to the jack there. Now, it's really difficult not to draw the comparisons to curling. That is fair. In, in bowls. Uh, do I, I would like to think that it's dependent on speed, uh, the way the balls the balls curl. That's exactly uh, it. But is it is it dependent on the terrain as well? Yes, hundred percent. Um, some greens are heavier than others. You were mentioning before it's running about ten seconds now, so it's a bit slower than you would like to have. So you need to throw a bit more weight to get it to the under, other end of the green here and the longer the jack is the more the bo the bowl will curl back around typically so you'll need to go out a bit further for it to curl back around each court 112 feet long Indeed. so right now they're running about 95 feet in this trial end mm -hmm. which is almost all of it basically yep yeah, the the jack's pretty much at the uh the six foot mark there so you can't have the jack being closer to the ditch board back there than six feet starting so it's pretty much the full length they're playing right now to trial it out each participant with two bowls yes two bowls for the fours here so and that's really not a lot of opportunity to get a feel for anything. It's is really it? not. When I bowl fours and we have trial lens, I typically throw one on the left side, one on the right side. You only have two. I want to see both sides. So I'll throw one on each side and see what happens. Now, in talking to a few of the members here before we went to air, they're talking about fours as the Rolls Royce of bowls. Is that a fair assessment? I feel like it depends on the bowler. It depends what you like, right? I would I pick fours as the Rolls Royce. I don't. I don't know. I I like having more than two bowls personally. I like having three or four bowls just in case I need another another shot to play. <laughs> so the uh, I guess the onus is on you to find a really good partner. Exactly. If you're playing fours. Exactly. If you're having four people on your team, you want to have. Uh, it planned out properly. Who's going to start? Who's going to get their bowl on the jack at the beginning? Who is going to set up the end for you? So that when you come up as the skip, you don't have a lot to do. Because you only have two bolts. There's not a lot you can reasonably do. Does that put more pressure on a lead? A little, I would say. Um, but at the same time, there's still four of you, right? So if, you, if the lead can't get their two there the second, they have a shot to get their two bowls there. And the vice can come up after that to see what needs to be done but as in curling the lead really sets the tone for the they, entire end they really do if they're getting their bowl right by the jack from the very beginning that sets the whole tone i don't know if you've been watching the bowls down here but they've been throwing a bit long which is good i mean to see what the length is like and wide wide as well uh, it's hard to tell from our angle here to see if the greens are more straight or curved, but they seem to be okay from what we can tell. And now they'll go back down to the other end. Yes, so now the skips will throw their two bowls, and the lead seconds and vices are now switching ends so that they will roll their bowls back. And that'll be the second trial end. Well, there isn't a protocol. There's no room to aim at, so I no. would imagine it's... Uh, it's it's more about feel and Very much so. about 
looking and, and sensing a situation and, and I, I suppose try to make the best of it. Exactly. In terms of uh, what you aim for, it really depends on the bowler. I personally look at the green and just pick out a spot in the grass itself to see how, how wide do I need to be. I'll just look at the green itself. Others will look at the backboard. There's the boundary lines, maybe looking at the boundary at the back or even at a bowl on the green saying, oh, this is my aim and I'll aim for that. It really depends on the bowler. So what, about 10 feet out from the mat? Is that the spot that you would attempt to hit? Um, I'm looking almost all the way down at the other end, really. I'm looking at where I want my bowl to be. So I'm looking down at the end where the jack is, looking at the grass near the jack and aiming there because that's where my bowl is going to end up. I don't want to look right in front of me. I want to be looking where it's going to end up. So Tessa's coming with her second Charlotte oh, bowl here, it looks like. She's a bit heavy as well. Understandably, it's Charlotte. is wanting to see how much weight it takes to get to the other end, just in case you need a back bowl later on. This Anne Morissette from Quebec. Yes, this is Anne coming down here now. And looks like she might be a little shy on that one, although... Not too She bad. got more out of that than I thought she was going yeah, to get. Yeah, it came back more than I expected. And now we will begin. The second trial end. We still have another trial end to go down. <laughs> back and forth is one end. Going down is one end. Coming back is the second end. So we've done one end of trial. Okay. We have a second end of trial coming up. Just here. to get a feel for the different direction. Exactly. It, okay. it does um, differ a bit depending on which Quebec, way you're going. Quebec gets an opportunity to put the jack in play. Yes, exactly. They can put it where they like. And note how she is just adjusting the jack wherever they want to be because it's just a trial right now. When the game actually starts, where the jack is thrown is where it will stay. Oh, you can't touch that. Well, you can touch it with the bolts, but... Not your foot. Not your foot. Just to line it up with the two, and then after that, you leave it. And there's a tendency to uh, to be a little heavy on your, on your first attempt going the other way because you just don't have a sense of that direction yet. Exactly. It's, it's hard to tell right from the beginning how much weight you really need to get to the other end. And that's good weight. It but is pretty good. Wrong straight. Exactly. The, uh, <laughs> the grass, as, as they call it, is not fantastic. How much width you need for it to curl right back to the jack. This so grass? they'll be riding that center line pretty tight. So if, if the first two trial ends are any indication. Mm -hmm. it, looks, it looks that way. Yeah. It also depends on the type of bowls, too. Um, some bowls are more straight than others. You don't need to go out quite as far. Others are more curl like curl would type bowls would you select your bowls based on condition of the of the bowl itself or yeah, the would you select the, the bowls that you're using in a situation like this based on the conditions i would um i personally only have one set of bowls that i use if i had multiple for multiple conditions that's exactly what more professional like, type bowlers will do like you if let's say you want a a straighter delivery you'd use uh, a ball that a bowl that wouldn't necessarily curl as much. Exactly, that's exactly it. And consider, can, depending on the type of uh, grass itself, if it's you know running a bit faster or a bit slower, that will affect, as I said before, the how much it will curl back around. So if it's curling a bit too much, maybe you want a straighter bowl so that you don't have to take as much grass to come back. Well, these greens rolling tremendously true here. They look pretty great from our vantage point here. They have cut and rolled these greens twice in the last day, in the last 24 hours to prepare the greens for this Governor General's tournament. That is great, great to hear because the more you cut it, the faster it will be. And well, they tried to get the speed up as much as they possibly could, but with the amount of rain that we've had over the yeah. last little while, it's been very, very difficult to get the speed up on these greens because they're just now so soft, and that's a lovely delivery. It is. Lovely shot there. Too bad it couldn't stay there. <laughs> it's only practice. Exactly.
Yes, exactly. They're trying to bring up the speed a bit because if the greens are heavy and it's taking a lot of weight to get to the other end, you get tired real, really quickly. And we have 14 ends to go through here. You don't want to get too tired too quickly. <laughs> 14 ends is standard in bowls. For championship games like, like this, yes. If we were in a regular tournament, typically they'll go with 12 ends and they'll have three games a day. So a bit shorter ends, but another game. Uh, so I'm curious, you uh, you won the Nationals in 2011 I did. with the Ontario Junior Team. What prompted you to get into lawn bowling and what would, like, what's the incentive for more young people to get involved in this? That's a great question. Um, for me, my incentive was definitely my family. My, I have five older siblings. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. My, my parents put my oldest brother into lawn bowling when they moved to my hometown in Chesley, and they joined the following year. They loved it. They put all of us in bowling as soon as we were old enough to get the bowls to the other end. So I've been bowling myself since I was nine years old. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So for me, the incentive was always has always been there. But I, I definitely would hope more younger people will join because people say it's an old person's sport. Fair enough. But to bowl a great delivery, to have a great game of bowls, you want to be able to get down and roll them properly, bend over, have a lovely delivery. And the older you get, the harder it is to bend over, right? So the younger you are, the more fun you're going to have <laughs> from now, what I can find. Yeah. Bowls primarily... Uh a British sport um, or a British game mm -hmm. um, and when Britain was colonizing the world they brought bowls to the world it, not surprising it was, it was everywhere um, and and now uh, and look at that our conditions are absolutely pristine here a little bit of a breeze beginning to freshen mm -hmm. but that shouldn't have much of an impact on the way things transpire here, but an absolutely beautiful day. Getting back to uh, Britain and bringing bowls to the world, uh, bowls, once a Commonwealth Games sport, and I think they were maybe uh, perhaps an Olympic sport at one time. Possibly. I'm not too sure about the uh, facts on that. And both teams getting a very, very good sense of where they need to be. For the game going forward, exactly. We just have one more trial here, and then the game will officially start. This is Ann Morissette, and she's got her weight down perfectly. She does. We'll see what Tessa does with her last practice here. Looks a bit heavy, but the line's pretty good. Just wide on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. going with a right-to-left turn on that. And I was looking at uh, the Rose Bowl trophy that will be presented following this match. Some of the scores on a 59-41, 52-48, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, typically, what kind of offensive production can we see from these players in this game? Well, from my understanding, it's combining the scores from both the game we had playing this morning and this game here, so that makes sense for the scores being a bit higher, but also it's 14 ends, so the maximum number of points you can have in a game is 21. So if they have 21 points just with this Ontario team combined with the other Ontario team that's playing further down the green, the, you can get, as you say, 50, uh, 50 points, 55 points. Well, the jack is in play. Heather Stevenson has delivered it, and she will throw her first ball of this match. 14 ends. And here we go. Going with a left to right turn. That is a great shot. The weight's perfect perfect and sitting about six inches away from the jack it's still open enough mm -hmm. that veronique collard the lead for quebec can get around that ball and get closer to the jack and and sit in a shot position 
She can. We'll see if she does that right now. Looks like she's a bit short. She's a bit shy, but it's a good block. It is. Hopefully, she can get a around it still with her next bowl to get closer than Heather's, but we'll see which way Heather comes with this one here. Going left to right. Mm -hmm. Trying to turn it around that blue guard. It's turning beautifully. Well and there's a wonderful delivery there from Heather Stevenson. Very great shot. Because she's a bit short there and blocking her own shot there, which is really well done. Makes it a bit harder for Veronique here to try and get around. And that's got way too much weight. Yes. And that blows well by the jack, giving Ontario yet another opportunity here. They're sitting two. They are. But... It is always good to have a back bolt, just in case something happens. We don't know. Maybe the jack's going to move back a bit. Maybe someone's going to come with some weight. We'll see what happens this end. Trisha Robertson. It's away. Looks like she's Going coming right to left the other this side. time. Yeah. It's oh, well a little done. bump and shimmies that one into sit shot. Very well done. So now we have a bowl that's right near the jack there for shot in front and behind. It's a very, very good setup for Ontario here. This is Sandra Mitchell here from Quebec, who's a bit too long, but again, good to have a back bowl. Good to be prepared, just in case. Ontario sitting Looks like maybe three. three. Looks like possibly three at this point. It's still early. We still have quite a number of bowls left. In second bowls, this Trisha Robertson second delivery, trying to get it to turn around. It's turning, but not enough, just a little too heavy. But she's now at the back with Sandra's bowl there. So if the jack gets moved, they have one back there too. That tends to be the strategy to have at this point, which is good. Sandra Mitchell for Team Quebec. Riding that center line, trying to slide it through, but it just slid away. And Quebec having some problems, not only with weight, but accuracy at this point. Looks like it. We'll see what Margaret does here for Team Ontario. Margaret Sutton, the vice. Trying to get it to turn. That one looks like it's got very good speed. Very good. Just slightly behind. <laughs> now Great Ontario shot. sitting four. That's what it looks like. Quebec has to make some shots here. We'll see what Celia Russell does here. There's Roussel's first of two. Trying to get it around that blue guard. She's curling in. Ooh. Just gives the Ontario bowl a rub, and Ontario still sitting four. So what's the strategy? Go for more or set up protection? I would set up protection myself, although we are pretty protected. We have a, a guard going on up front. We have some back bowls as well. So maybe, maybe Margaret's going to just draw another one in here since and she did it so beautifully the first time. And just a little heavy, but good enough to sit five. Possibly. We'll, we'll see what they end up doing at the end here for measuring, but Celia really need, needs to make a shot here. Drawing in, it still looks like it's open on the side she wants to come, so we'll see what happens. A little wide, it would appear. Roussel trying to bring it back in and Didn't. it will go wanting. Just a bit. Her weight was nice. Just, as you say, a bit too wide for it to come back. And now they're getting prepared for skip stones. Tessa McKechnie looking over what she wants to do and now the discussions happen. Mm -hmm. uh, skips really don't like to be in a position where they have to make a shot. Exactly. <laughs> and Tessa McKechnie sitting quite nicely here. 
uh, with skips, skip bowls remaining. Mm -hmm. From their discussion, it looked like she might be putting in another block out front. We'll see. We'll see what she does here with her bowl. But if it was me, I would put another block out front. It still looks a bit too open on the right-hand side for Quebec to put one in there. McCagney's first of two. And that's why she doesn't like it. Wide and heavy. Both of those things, yes. Again, back bowl, not terrible, but probably not the shot she was wanting to make. And Morissette from Montreal. Five clubs remaining in Quebec, all in the Montreal area. Well, I have bowled at Westmount in Montreal when I was when I won the. Oh, that's there. just an absolutely perfect delivery by Wonderful. Morissette to sit one and steal five away from Ontario. It's the shot she had to make, and she made it very well done. Let's see what Tessa does here. Can she get it back? Here's McKechnie, bumps the front, and Quebec were looking like they were going to have a tremendous amount of work ahead of them. Now, Ann Morissette is sitting one at this point. Uh, she Does she go for another one here and, and risk moving her own out of shot position? She's got to have the perfect weight to not move the jack too far because it's all Ontario behind the jack there. If she can draw perfectly right in, by all means. We'll see what she does here. Some might think she could just throw it away and take the one. That is almost what happens. <laughs> just a bit short and that doesn't want to touch anything. That's okay. One for Quebec. And they take a one nothing lead. Surprise, surprise. It looked like it was all Ontario, but the importance of Skip Bowles really showing themselves in this first end. Really, very much so. So Quebec opens the scoring. One nothing here in the first end. We play 14 kids. Mm -hmm. We have quite a few more ends ahead of us. We'll see where Quebec wants to put the jack this time because since they won, they get to place the mat. It's moved up a bit from the back there. They've moved the, the mat forward. We'll they see. They place the jack and Ontario gets the hammer. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. It's a bit of a shorter jack. We'll see how this affects the players, if they can adjust their weight. And the jack situates itself and then it's placed on the center line. Exactly. So the lead will throw the jack and wherever it ends up is the length, assuming it makes it far enough. So the little red pigs that Highland Park has here to de designate their hog lines, the jack has to make it past the red pig if it's six meters from the end, the mat there. It has to be a certain length and assuming it's made that, then the jack lines up with the center marks they have in front of the two there. This is Heather Stevenson. And a little shy. Both but, leads are a bit shy. But a nice gap right up the middle to the jack. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what Veronique Collard is going for. She's trying to bump the jack. She, she does. does. And a great shot for Quebec to sit maybe two possibly the bowls are a bit far to see for sure from the front here but one for sure one for sure and then now the jack is no longer lined up with the center so needing to adjust how much grass you're taking to curl it over to the jack now and that seems to be a little much maybe trying a little bump the take out mm -hmm. and it just missed so Heather Robertson, or Heather Stevenson, rather, comes up empty on her second. Here's Sandra Mitchell. Mitchell trying to go to the outside and get it to come back in, and that heavy as well. It came back. It's still in play, it looks like, within the boundaries, but yes, it is a back bowl. Again, preparation just in case the jack moves, like how Veronique moved it 
with her second bowl, the Jack can go wherever within the boundary lines here. Trisha Robertson rides the center line and just left of the Jack and her boys, little, little heavy house. goes yeah. into the uh, the trough. Yes, the ditch, yeah. and also out of bounds as well. So both making it a dead bowl and taken off of the green. Good weight there by Mitchell. Keeps it in play and another back bowl for Quebec. Mm -hmm. Ontario needs to uh, get some bowls in the head right now. We don't have much going on right now. Quebec sitting three at this point, mm -hmm. maybe four. Depending on what the bulls are out, out front there. All the way around, curling in beautifully, and a lovely bump there. And Very Ontario well seems to be within the length of the first Quebec bull, and Ontario may be sitting one now, but that might require a measurement. That's exactly it. It's hard to. Uh, tell when there's that much distance from the jack and the bull and also on an angle as well but great shot great shot so both teams getting into difficulty and then seemingly finding their way out of it that's what makes good bowlers dan finding your way out of difficult situations making the shots that need to be made and that one well out of bounds <laughs> Well out of bounds, exactly. So, Margaret Sutton looking to take a lot of grass here. Looks like she's going to try the other side then. Turning it left to right. Mm -hmm. Does she have the weight to make it there? She has the weight, but just a little bit outside the line necessary. Yes not come back enough to be and you gotta go within the boundaries, I don't think. Really have to be precise when the jack gets over to either side of the center line. Exactly. So where's the line? The closer it is to the boundary, the more likely it is your bowl will go out of play. And that's not helpful. Your line is over by here. Okay, just past the white. Celia Roussel. Hoping to keep her bowl in play. Yes, very nice. Let Delivery go. looks good. Come on. Right on the center line, going left, riding in, and a beautiful delivery by Roussel to sit shot bowl. Very well done. Lovely shot. We'll see how Margaret responds. Getting high fives and the fist bumps. <laughs> Good energy. And again, Margaret Sutton outside her target line, and that one will roll into the trough mm -hmm. and out of bounds and out of play. So now Skip Stone's here with Quebec in a really good position about a little over a foot away from the jack and we'll have to wait and see what Ann Morissette and Tessa McKechnie can come up with on their final two deliveries of the second end. Exactly. The previous end is when Ann had to make shots. Now Tessa will have to see what she can do to get the points back. Ann Morissette made a big shot with Ontario sitting five in the first. Great shot. And Tessa McKechnie really anxious to play, but she realized <laughs> she would have been playing out of turn. Exactly. Since Quebec won that point, they get to start here. So this is Anne who will be throwing her first. And Morissette. I think she'd like to have that one back. It's a bit short, but it could be in the way for Tessa. We'll see which side Tessa ends up Difficult choosing. to determine along that line how much room is there. Mm -hmm. Mm 
McKechnie. Trying a left to right turn, gets through, but it's wide and long. And goes into the ditch there. So Quebec will more than likely take the one here, but that's got a lot on it from Morissette, trying to turn it in. Very, very close, but I don't think it's inside the uh, first Ontario Bowl. And it will be Quebec one with Tessa McKechnie with the final bowl of this second end. Maybe she'll draw to the cat, we'll see. She gets it through. And the lovely shot, Great and McKechnie shot. comes up with a big shot here in the second. Boy, the skips showing their prowess in the early going here. Fantastic. So Ontario ties things up when it would appear that there could have been multiple scoring in both ends but the skips come up big on their final two of each of the first two ends and we've got a 1-1 tie and boy these are like these two teams are like prize fighters exchanging punches trading them exactly like that it's always it's important to have good skips for your team to so be able to make those shots and not um given to the pressure of needing to make a shot. Just throwing your bowl, being confident where it's going to go. And all three ends so far now uh, have begun with the Jack in very, very similar positions. About that, yeah. Maybe the leads are liking that length so far. Leads are liking that length, but when do you throw a shorty to throw a spanner in the works? It, uh, it depends if you're wanting to throw off the other team a little bit, you will maybe pull up the mat and maybe throw the jack a bit longer to have the same length, but just the perception looks different to change it up a bit. We'll see maybe the next end, they might change up the length, but for now we're still sticking with around the middle. For Heather now. Roberts, or Heather Stevenson. Through has, hers. Uh, this is Veronique Collard from Quebec coming down now. And that's heavy. Just a bit. Back ball, Ontario sitting one. Stevenson so with her second delivery and looking to skip Tessa McKechnie for some instruction. To see how far her bowl is from the jack there. Still lots of space for her to come around either, either way. Riding the center line nicely, trying to get it to turn in almost exactly in the same position as her first delivery and now sits two. So we talked about the importance of skip stones to establish the tone of an end. I believe Heather Stevenson has done just that. She really has. She set the tone for this end, having two bowls in the head there. We'll see what Veronique does. Can she get her bowl closer than Heather's? to switch the tone back in Quebec's favor. Veronique Collard trying to get it through. Little bump and gives Ontario possibly two. The Quebec bowl that bumped that initial Ontario block may be inside the second Ontario bowl, but we uh, can't really determine that from this vantage point just yet. No, we can't. We'll have to see if people, if the other teams will get closer. So it'll take the question out of the equation. Yeah, here comes Bob McGregor. Just wait for Bob. Yeah. Looks like it's a bit uh, windy here. The umbrella may have taken down one of the lines they have above the greens to prevent the birds from landing on the greens here. But it's been taken care of. We'll continue bowling, hopefully shortly. Trisha Robertson taking care of things. <laughs> Not only participating in this match, but also uh, 
a member of the Highland Park Lawn Bowling Club and trying to make sure that everything was just copacetic. But the wind has freshened here this afternoon. It has. Does that really make any difference in the delivery of the bowls? If it's a strong enough wind and it'll move your bowl, it, it will have an effect. I, I wouldn't say the wind is too strong at this point to have much much effect on the bowls themselves although the umbrellas have been flying around a little bit <laughs> here and at highland park perhaps trisha roberts in a bit uh, preoccupied <laughs> that uh, that delivery into the trough at the end and and now it's sandra mitchell once again for quebec and that one looks to have some good pace does it have enough to turn a little bit of a bump and now quebec with two very close to the jack, but Ontario still sitting one at least. We'll see if Trisha can um, adjust her weight and not be quite as heavy this time around. Robertson's delivery, good pace. Riding the center line gets through, but just a tad heavy. Very good adjustment from her first, that's for sure. Sandra Mitchell trying to deliver similar to her first, but again, a little bit wide and setting up a back bowl, but that's only contingent upon them getting at getting to the jack and nobody's being able to ride the center line finally enough to get it through the two quebec bowls and the one ontario bowl out in front exactly still lots of space in the head there we'll see how margaret sutton does with her bowl here Sutton trying to turn it in, riding the center line, but the turn happens a little early. And that one, good weight, but again, wrong straight. It really is difficult having uh, bulls out in front there to know can you make it around on the left or having to go wider on the right. And doesn't matter. It's and they're illustrating that if they go too wide, it stays out there and it doesn't come back in. Exactly. Which isn't what you want either. Makes it a bit tricky. Yes. That one's got some pretty good pace on it, trying to keep it straight, but that one moves left as well. And another back bowl for Quebec here. But yes, the heavier you throw the bowl, the straighter it will be, but it will still curl away eventually. Margaret Sutton gets it outside. That one turning nicely. Sutton moves in, hits the jack, and it will be Ontario for sure here, and they may be sitting three. It could be. It looks like that. They moved the jack back, and Ontario has at least a couple back there. It looks like at least two from our vantage point here. Well, the two red ones are Margaret Sutton's, and the black one was Heather Stevenson's lead. Yes. Oh. Lead so. bulls are important. Yes, Mike. This Celia Roussel. And that just outside the Ontario Bowl. So Ontario sitting one for sure, maybe two, but that will be determined. But now skip bowls coming up and we've seen just how important they can be in this match already. Exactly. In the first and second ends and now strategy being discussed by Margaret Sutton and Tessa McCackney. Probably seeing if she can make it around on the left side here. It looks pretty open. Um, since the jack has been moved, the Quebec Bulls hopefully won't, won't be too much of an issue for Tessa. But we'll see which side she ends up 
throwing here. Definitely not wanting to bump those Quebec Bulls closer than they already are, that's for sure. I would imagine that later, in the later stages of a game, it's, it's, it becomes more or less uh, a factor of trying not to make a mistake that's going to cost your team. Exactly. Not necessarily making a shot to win, but just not to cost you. Not making it worse, exactly. Because as the ends count down, there's only so many ways you can come back from, say, giving up three or four. If you can keep it to one or two, that's much better. And Morissette coming down here with her bull. And getting a nice turn. She wants to get a little bump. And the bump wasn't enough. Not quite enough weight to move those two Quebec Bulls closer. So it's still one Ontario, at least at this point. Here's Tessa McKechnie. Quebec opened the scoring in the first. Ontario countered. Oh, and a beautiful delivery by McKechnie. Well done. To sit two and get the jack behind cover. Fantastic shot. If I was in, I would come in with a little bit of weight to try and move those bulls and move the jack back. Because as we saw before, Quebec has back bulls back there. And if you can move the jack further, would be much in Quebec's favor. Well, it's two Ontario right now, maybe three. And here is Morissette's delivery once again. A little wide, but she's inside, eliminating one Ontario bull. So it's still Ontario with two. Better than three, which is good. And now Ontario leading by a score of 3 1. We'll see how Quebec counters in this end. As we see, as we saw, it's been back and forth. What each a end. What a great delivery once again by Tessa McCackney to get the Ontario ball inside. I mean, everybody had been trying the same delivery mm -hmm. for the entire end, and Tessa McCackney, the only successful player, and she made it count. She did. She moved the jack and, as you said, hit it behind her ball too, making it even more difficult for Anne to try and get hers in there too. For the jack here, it looks like it's a bit shorter than last end, but still around the middle. Looks like they really are favoring this length here. But the mat is a little further back as well. It is, it is. It's not as far forward, so. Akin to the length from last end. Nice delivery there by Stevenson once again. She does seem to be pretty consistent, which is really good to have in a lead. If you can count on your lead being in the head near the jack when they come up every time, it makes it much easier for the rest of the team. Veronique Collard, her first delivery, a little bit long, would have been perfect with the jack in position in end number two. That's true. Would have been perfect last time. Her, her line was good in this hand, in this, uh, and the, ended up coming right back in line with the jack, just a bit too long. And Stevenson a little heavy there too. So Ontario sitting two at this point, but Still very, early. very early in this fourth end. It's the fourth end already, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's going pretty quick. Collard. Riding the center line, trying to get it to turn. It does, but just a little late to sit inside one of the Ontario Bulls. And Ontario sits one with Trisha Robertson getting set to deliver her first of two. Let's see what Trisha does. Uh, 
Robertson trying to get it to turn right to left. It's beginning. It's Acme. And well another done. nice delivery there by Trisha Robertson. Puts Ontario in the driver's seat here in the fourth. Great line and great yeah, beat for Trisha. Very nice. Play. Let's see what Sandra does here. Outside the line and threads the needle on the two Ontario bowls. Not quite what she wanted, that's for sure. But again, back bowl. Good to have. Now, have you tried bowls yourself, Dan? I, I have. Know. You have? What did you think? I uh, I enjoyed it. I, I play a lot of golf, so I have an affinity for short grass things. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and greens are perfect as is this delivery by Robertson Ontario sitting three well done a little behind two which is really nice to have yeah it's a lot more difficult than than it appears to be when you're just watching it and another one a little bump but Ontario still sitting three Two for sure, um, possibly three. We'll see how Sandra's back bowl there ends up with the front, but Margaret might put another one in here for three. We'll see. This is Margaret Sutton, the Ontario Vice. Good form. And that's going to be a little short. light. A bit short. The line was great. Just needed a bit more weight on it. Just make sure you're in the hand. But it sets up a good block. It really to, does. To keep Ontario in a scoring position. Making it harder for Celia here to get her bowl around the front. may not have enough. It doesn't quite look like it. Again, the grass was good. The line was what she wanted, just a bit more weight. Well, she did come on to the right side of that center line. So in theory, there should be enough room for Margaret Sutton to get around that lead Quebec ball. There should be. We'll see if she does it. Looks good so far. Takes it outside about two feet, trying to get it to roll back in, but a little too far outside. We'll see if Celia can get hers to come back. Adding a bit more weight this time to get in there. Here's Roussel trying to get it through. She does. But again, it rolls long, and Ontario sits two with skip stones to come. Skip, skip bowls, excuse me. <laughs> I like the term skip stones, though. We're skipping stones, skipping places. Now we need to see what the skips will do. And now, strategy as Anne Morissette discusses what she'd like. Maybe not right now, but certainly within the next 10 ends and I, I suppose that's a luxury in bowls is the fact that uh, if you get down early there's still a lot of time left you can get back in that's exactly it um what my dad always taught us is never never quit never give up you never know how you'll bowl the next dent just keep bowling you'll have some more ends to make it up i know i've personally been down many times you know eight to one nine to one and you just you keep bowling. You don't give up. You don't uh, get down on yourself, and you bring it back around. Tessa McKechnie. Trying to ride the center line and set up a bit of a block. Did that curl in enough? Hard to say from this angle. Definitely in front of the jack but we can't see too much if it's blocking and I still here. think there might be a port there between that Ontario bowl and the lead Quebec bowl in the front from Celia Roussel. 
Here is Ann Morissette with her first of two. Takes it to the outside of the center line, trying to bring it back in. It came back just... It did come back, but just not enough to edge out the two Ontario Bulls in behind the Jack. It still looks like two for Ontario at this point. Tessa McKechnie with her final delivery of this fourth end. McKechnie moves that up and it takes off on her to the right. And Ann Morissette now with the final stone, the hammer here in four. Ooh, looks like Ontario might only be counting one right now if we're hearing Celia correctly here talking to Anne. So maybe she just needs to get a little closer to the jack and then she will be sitting shot here. We'll see what happens. Anne Morissette with the final ball here in four. Trying to move it in, gets a bump, but it's not going to be enough. It should be one Ontario. They might measure. It might be a bit close. Well, it's definitely one Ontario. And now they're measuring to see whether it might be two. <laughs> Margaret Sutton here measuring to her team's bowl here to see if it's closer than... And her, uh, Quebec's bowl on the other on side the, there. On the outside. Yes. If it's close enough, they might want to call an umpire over to measure for them. We'll Look at that. See. It's almost equidistant. That's what it looks like from our vantage point here. Well, you're a master's in math. Is there a term for this? For measuring? In, in No, for this situation. Where it's in it, math? It, I mean, you used it before, equidistant, equal distance. Seems like the right uh, okay. term to use here. And Ontario has indeed got two points. Two for Ontario. They lead now five to one. But again, like you said, Christina. Early on, still many, many ends to go. You don't quit. Nope. No quit. Don't give up. Don't... Uh, think you're in a hole you can't get out of. There's many people on this team and we can bring it back around. And the Jack delivered here in five. Uh, I would say roughly the same, maybe a bit longer than last end, but not too, too long, which is nice. We'll see what Heather does with her bowl here. I noticed that the tape that they were using to measure is um, almost like a measuring tape that you would measure if you're doing sewing. construction, right? Or yes. sewing, sure. <laughs> I know there are different measures to be had. There are string measures, which are a bit longer. And I, I wouldn't say more accurate, but uh, I, I personally prefer the string measures just so that it's just easier to go from the bowl to the jack. Not that I'm a fan of measuring. I always get a bit nervous. I'm scared I'm going to move the jack a bit when I'm trying to put the measure against the jack to the bowl. But sometimes you just can't tell by looking at it, and measurings have to happen. Yeah, but you're on the honor system in that situation. Oh, oh the jack moved. Sorry. Yeah. Did you see that? I'll put it back to where it was. Exactly. And perfect weight there from Veronique Collard just behind the jack and outside Quebec sits one. We'll see how Heather responds. Heather Stevenson. She's a bit short. Her line was pretty good. Just a bit too short here. You can get something in the way out there on that path in. It's true. Maybe Veronique will switch sides if Heather's bowl is too much in her way. Looks like she did indeed. Collard. Come the other side. She did. We did throw. Goes to the other side, bumps the jack in Quebec now. Sits two. Well done. Great shot. Again, the importance of back bowls too. So when the jack moves, you have other things back there. So Veronique Collard 
and the importance of the lead position mm -hmm. displaying itself here at the Highland Park Lawn Bowling Club for the 92nd Governor General's Tournament. This, the Governor General's Rose Bowl. It's unfortunate the Governor General couldn't be here with us this morning to introduce everyone, but indeed the Governor General's Tournament, as you see, 92 years. I haven't been around for that long. I haven't seen 92 years yet. Willingdon. Yes, Willingdon Cup. The, uh, the Governor General that offered the trophy and great weight there by Trisha Robertson. Uh, Willingdon as Governor General also uh, offered uh, a cup for amateur golf in Quebec. Oh, really? The Willingdon Cup is, is contested throughout the province of Quebec on an annual basis. Really? And it's still happening now too? They it still, still have happens it? every year. Wow. Have you been in that competition, Dale? No. <laughs> <laughs> Another great delivery by Quebec now to sit perhaps two. Perhaps. Very good placement back there. Just a couple feet behind the jack. Well done by Sandra Mitchell. I know Trisha's weight was good before. We'll see if she can have the weight and the line this time. A little bit of a bounce off the delivery. Heading well left. And she more than likely would love play. to have that one back. Definitely. And it indeed did go out of play there, out of boundaries. Here's Sandra Mitchell. Trying to get it turned back in. And another lovely delivery by Mitchell toward the back end of this court with the Jack being bumped by Quebec. They sit in a position to score two right now with Margaret Sutton set to deliver her first of two. We'll see how this goes here. It is a bit longer. As you said, they bumped the Jack. Can they adjust their weight to get it all the way down there? This is Sutton's first, trying to get it around the corner. It turns beautifully, and Sutton is in behind the second Quebec bowl, but it's still one Quebec at this point. Indeed. Maybe even two, depending on how the bowl is leaning. Exactly, as we saw, it, it fell over a bit there. So the depending the on the, the angles here. of the bowls and the jack, Marcus Sutton's bowl could be second shot right now. Here's Celia Roussel. I'm curious which side she'll end up coming on. She might come the right. I don't know if she has the weight to get not, it all the way there. Certainly not enough. Not quite. Another one in the way on that side, that's for sure. But yeah, I was just about to say there is a lot of traffic in front. There is, and it makes it difficult. Especially if it's in the the drawing line. If that's where your bowl needs to go to make it to the jack and there's a bowl right in the way, how can you adjust to still make it back? Margaret Sutton here is coming down to look at the head to see where her bowl should end up. Maybe seeing how far the Quebec bowls are in front of the jack. Consulting with Tessa to see what her shot should be. Since Margaret is consulting here, Celia is also consulting with Anne to see what Anne is wanting for her second shot as well. And quite impressively, these ladies have not wasted much time in discussions about strategy or where they nope. want the jack to go. It's, uh, it's all business. Let's get out there and do it. Exactly. They're bowling fairly quickly, which is, which is nice. I know I myself like it when a game just flows naturally and not a lot of 
discussion. Everyone knows what they want to do, and they go about trying to do it. So the book on Christine Shuknack is, like, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> take your time. Take your time. Get her out. Rattle her a little. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good shot By from Margaret. Margaret Sutton. But Quebec still sitting one and down five to one here in the fourth. It would be great to get one, but you want to get more than one if you're going to give up the hammer. That is true. That is true. I personally do enjoy having the hammer, having it as uh, the last shot to be made because sometimes it, it only takes one shot, Dan to change things around as we saw with the skips earlier in this game only takes one shot to change it th to change things but also with Quebec you know only having one point even getting one more to start the momentum back again start counting again maybe they will change the jack placement maybe they'll have it a bit shorter or a bit longer change things up so Shuffle it's things. five to one skips heading down to deliver their final bowls of this fifth end and a ton of bowls in play, all of them in play here, which uh, makes it very, very busy in front of the Jack. It really does. Um, I'll be curious to see again which side Tessa and Anne will end up coming. Because as we, as we said, it's hard to see from our vantage point how much the bulls are in the way of the draw line right now. But it is a lot of Quebec bulls out front here, so Tessa needs to be careful not to knock them closer. Lots of speed. She doesn't want to be short, that's for sure. On this one. She's close. By McKechnie, and she just pours that one in beautifully. I'm not sure whether or not she's sitting shot stone or shot bowl, but I think it's still Quebec. It looks like it, but at least now it's just one for Quebec. It might have been two before. Now it should be just one. McKechnie with a lovely delivery, and that's why these two ladies are in the positions that they are. They're experienced. They're really good at what they do, they and they know exactly what they're doing. Exactly. They have the confidence to deliver their bowls and deliver them well. Morissette, a little shy on that one, but closes the door on McKechnie trying to get in there, setting up a bit of a block in that lane that McKechnie wanted to use to get at that jack. And now there's more traffic in front, and it might force McKechnie to go around the right side. It might, but we've seen that side. It's hard to come back if you get out too wide. I'm, I'm skeptical of what Tessa's going to do right now. Can her bull come back around if she gets out wide enough? Lots of speed. Riding the line. Oh, Kicks an umbrella. Through. The umbrella's through. Bumps the Quebec bull. But no... There were, there were no, the umbrella did not touch any of the bowls. It did not. So that's a good sign. So everything should remain as is. I'm not sure what the ruling is for this, though, since there was an obstacle in the way. Will they have to replay the end or can they keep going? It looks like they can keep going. There's only one more bowl left to go in this end, so... And it's Ann Morissette. Yeah, we'll see what to... Uh, so Quebec... She'll do here. And Ontario, very, very close. There may have to be a measurement on the two bowls that are close to being shot bowl. Indeed. From our point here, it almost looks like Ontario could be shot, but it's really hard to say. We'll see if Anne can draw another one in here. You maybe even move the jack closer to the Quebec Bowl on the left-hand side there. She's coming around. 
Morissette's bowl. Can she get there? Not enough. She had the road just a bit too short. And coming in the right side, it's been difficult. They've all been wide on that. Exactly. So one for Quebec. Quebec. Like. So now five two. Five to two. And Ontario has the hammer. So Quebec gets one. They score. But I would imagine that Morissette would have been a lot happier with two than one. Oh, I'm sure. It's always nice to have more points than just one. We'll see what they do with the jack here. It looks like they moved the mat a bit up from the backboard there, changing up the perception of where the jack is going to be. Hopefully in Quebec's favor, since they're that trying to change. Oh, that one's going deep. I don't know if uh, Veronique Collard wanted it to go that, that far. far. And now the trough comes into play because the jack so far down the court that it's going to be very, very weight sensitive, these, uh, this end. Indeed, very weight sensitive. It also depends on how the greens themselves are positioned at the backboard there. Do they slope a bit down? Is it hard for the bull to stop once you get past a certain point? All things they have to consider with long ends like this one. Ronnie's a bit short. We'll see how Heather counters her. But it's in play and it's ahead of the jack. Exactly. Here's Heather Stevens, the lefty. Does she have the speed? She got more than Quebec, and that is just an absolutely lovely delivery from Heather Stevens to start off the sixth hand. Well done. And still a bit in front, maybe blocking the jack a little bit, making it harder for Ronnie to see. All good things to have. Verony Collard. For Team Quebec, the bump and the carom right in line, and now the jack is well behind cover. It is. You'll have to trust that when you go out around the bulls, it'll come back, and that you'll trust the weight in your bulls, the weight that's there to curl it back around. Stevens trying to come in left to right. And that just a tad heavy, but it will stay in play. And as we said, we're near the back dish board here, so any back bowls are good to have in case jack movement happens. Quebec opened the scoring in the first, taking one. Ontario countered in the second with one of their own. Then they went, scored two in the third, two in the fourth, and Quebec got one back in the fifth, and that's where we stand here in the sixth, and Ontario leading five to two. Looks like Sandra had a back bowl back there along with Trisha Robertson. We'll see how Trisha, or oh, sorry, that was Heather's that's back there. Trisha is gonna have her first of two very shortly. That was Sandra Mitchell's first. Mm -hmm. This will be Trisha Robertson's first. Again, with the jack being covered by the front bulls there, having to come around and curl back. But we've seen with that side, it doesn't always come back if you get out too far. Close to the center line, coming in. Has he got enough? A little bump, and that m will move Ontario. They'll still be in a in shot position, but they've moved the jack into the light of day exactly. with that little bump. They really have. They've taken away the cover that was there and opening it up for... There's Sandra Quebec. Mitchell. Good weight, but it just curled away. It did. But as you say, the jack is now open. We'll see if Trisha tries to cover it again or maybe draw one in on the other side. We'll see. Four. 
You said you've tried Bull's Den. Did you like it when you tried it? I did enjoy it. Uh, it took me about 15 or 20 minutes to get a feel for the bowls. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the terrain is concerned in the greens, that's not something I'm unfamiliar with. So that wasn't the obstacle. The obstacle was uh, just getting comfortable with the weight of the bowls and the offsetted weight mm -hmm. of the bowls. And, and and then, of course, trying to find the depth to get it close to the jack. Exactly. Uh, but I did enjoy it. it, uh, it it's a wonderful game, and it is something that uh, that you don't know. You can't appreciate its difficulty until you try it yourself. That's exactly it. Exactly it. As you're saying, the bowls are not completely round. They're a bit almost like squished, so that uh, what's rolling now is... Just not on much. the flat end, it but just turn. you don't want to roll it end over end because then you're not going to get very far. It's a smooth so part of the bowl that's rolling now. Bowl, and as you said, there is a weight on the one side, so it'll curl well, I mean, around depending on which end, which direction you put the... It's called the second. bias, the bias on the this bowl, whether it will curl to the left or to the right. It'll depend yep. on how you hold it in your hand. Margaret Sutton. The Ontario Vice. Looks like she's coming on the left to right. Trying to move it left to right. Jack wide open. Sutton moving in. Nice. Bumps her own Ontario ball and heads to the back. But it's still Ontario in a shot position. Leading 5-2 to two here in the sixth. Indeed, Margaret came with a bit of weight. I'm sure she was a bit relieved that she didn't move the jack too far and oh take God. away the position yeah. that they have Step right off. now. There's Celia Roussel. And again, on Quebec trying to follow the same line as Ontario, but they're just getting a little outside that Ontario mark. Just a little bit. As we see on that side, once you get past a certain point, okay. it's not very forgiving coming back. This is Margaret Sutton, and it's not going to have enough. She adjusted a bit too much from her first bowl being too far back, now, now a bit too much in front. Now, depending on the vantage point from the delivery position, that might be considered a long guard. Yeah, honestly, that is exactly it. We can't, can't see too much here from our position but if it's right in the draw line a long guard might be exactly what it is and what Margaret might have been trying for but now we have the skips coming up to play who've been bowling very well both Anne and Tessa yeah they're putting on a show today for sure they are they know they're on TV they want to put on a good <laughs> show <laughs> everybody gets excited when they're on television <laughs> exactly and we're happy to have you along for the ride as well here on Rogers TV. Dan Mooney along with Christine Shukneck. Happy and, to be here. Yeah, for the 92nd Governor General's Tournament. Started in 1928. Long and it's been ago. going, and it's never missed. Even during the war years and pandemic, apparently they... Uh, I, I don't know whether or not they could have done it during the pandemic. I'm not too sure about that. Not too sure. But apparently, according to the program, it's been uninterrupted since 1928. Which is a big feat. <laughs> a big feat. As you say, there was the World War, Second World War happening there. And they still were bowling. Looks like Tessa a bit wide. There. And now Quebec with an opportunity here. But Ontario has the hammer. They do. They do. We'll see if that will help them here. And second bowl here. Trying to go right to left of the center line, and it's not coming back. It is not. She doesn't have the weight to quite get it there. Ontario's still sitting one at this point. So now Tessa McKechnie sitting one. Hoping to get two, I would imagine. I would imagine she's going to try and get inside that the red ball there. Quebec ball. Now, the red one 
That is probably maybe two feet away. The Ontario bull is on the other side of the jack, maybe a foot away. That sounds about right. But she doesn't want to move the jack closer to the Anne's Quebec. bull at the back. That's right. So this is a, definitely a touch shot for Tessa McKechnie. Wanting to have just enough weight to get there, but not enough to move the jack. The bull is away. Riding the center line, starting to turn in, starting to turn in, and a wonderful shot by Tessa McKechnie. Great shot. Two for Ontario, we'll have to await. Wait for the vices. Maybe they'll measure. One for sure anyway. Great shot by Tessa. It was, it was um, profitable having that hammer, having that last shot there. Makes a huge difference here and now looks like two two ontario and now they lead seven to two quebec with the hammer and we're just coming to the seventh end which is the halfway point it is the halfway point in this match and so far it's uh, been the skip show it between really has. Ontario and Quebec. It really has. From what we've started in the beginning, Ontario might be laying some, having some in, near the head, then not Quebec, but it really depends on Tessa and Anne. They are the ones pulling it out here in this Governor General's tournament. Matt is placed by Heather Stevens. And uh, she's just... Getting a set breath. to deliver the jack and taking a breath. This is uh, this is a big deal. This is a, a, a one of the pinnacles of lawn bowling in the nation's capital on an annual basis, and it's just uh, it's wonderful to have it here at the Highland Park Club. I know you remember at uh, the uh, Elmdale, Elmdale uh, Lawn Bowling Club, and and you've hosted this event too. From my understanding, I, I believe so. I just joined Elmdale this year, actually. I only moved to Ottawa in 2019 for my master's, so I'm still new to the National Capital Region, but I plan on staying here for a little while anyway. Good. So. Yes, they're going to re-roll the jack. There was a, a foul, and now it is Quebec getting an opportunity to roll the jack, and now... It's a bit longer this time. They've moved the mat up further, and the jack is a bit closer to the ditch board there. Because when but, Heather threw her jack, it went out of bounds. But Ontario does not get the hammer. Quebec does not seed the hammer. They just got an opportunity to get the jack in play. And here's Heather Stevens with an absolutely wonderful delivery to set the tone here in seven. Very well done. And even better behind the jack as it's closer to the ditch board there. So just in case it moves a bit, Heather is prepared. There's Veronique Collar. Yes, indeed. When a jack is thrown out of bounds or in the ditch, the other team has the opportunity to throw the jack. If they also throw it out of bounds or in the ditch, then it is placed two meters from the well, end there. There's some chicanery from Team Quebec, <laughs> knocking the Ontario's ball out of shot position and getting into a scoring one herself. If the ball's there, might as well use it. <laughs> Here's Heather Stevens. Looking pretty good. The weight looks okay. Oh, another fantastic delivery by Stevens. She freezes right to the jack. Great shot. Very well done. Look at that. You couldn't put a piece of paper between the two. No, it looks right, right close. Ronnie is basically forced to play the other hand to try and move the jack away from the bowl if she can. Is she going to stay up enough or is it going to curl? Roll, it's curling away. Didn't have the weight to keep it straight. So Ontario now in shot position, but you know that Quebec's going to try and knock it out. 
they will. So now Trisha Robertson, it comes upon her to try to set up a block and it protect that shot stone, that shot bowl. Set up a block or possibly even put one behind the jack as well. Either would be perfectly good strategies. Coming right to left, riding the line. And that's pretty good too, but still some room on that right side for Quebec to get in. They do. She's Trisha's blocking on the left. I personally would prefer a block on the right because we see Sandra Mitchell here coming on the right hand side. And she's following the same line that Robertson did and misses on the left side as well. Curling a bit too soon. Very close. I need a block and I need it. Here. And Tessa McKechnie calling for the block. Exactly, on the right-hand side there. Trying to put something in the eye of the Quebec team so that they can't move the jack. Or at least make it very difficult to move the jack. Block bowls are hard to place, though, because you throw a bit lighter, but you'll need to adjust your line so that it curls right around and stops where you want it to stop. At this level, there's such a premium on precision. Very much so. This is Trisha Robertson. Trying to set up the block, but again, it leaks a bit on her onto the left side of that center line. And Sandra Mitchell has a lean to the jack. She does. We'll see if she adjusts her line a bit. That might be a little too far wide. It looks a bit too wide. Although it's starting to curl in now. Oh, look at that. Sandra Mitchell. Very Getting close. in, but establishing a little bit of protection for that Ontario scoring ball. This is true. What could happen now, depending if Sanders is even with the jack, they could hit Sanders and it's called a wick, wick off the bowl into the jack, using it as kind of a backboard kind of for the bowl. Coming left to right this time. A little bit of speed, trying to get it through and a little bump through, trying to get the ricochet. And it just eluded the Quebec bowl sitting in second shot position. So Ontario is still holding here, but it's getting a bit precarious for Ontario. It's surrounded by Quebec bowls at this point. Any movement would not be good for Ontario. <laughs> Heather Stevens, second ball, clinging to the jack. At clinging this for point. dear life. <laughs> Here's Celia Roussel. As we said, the lead on, setting up Lux. the end. Come that on. was the second ball that Heather threw, and it's still Almost. holding on there. And more traffic in front as Roussel's initial, and now Margaret Sutton wants to come down and have a look. Now, is a timeout call necessary in this situation or can you just come down and have a look? Typically you can come down and have a look. You have to at least throw one of your bowls before you come down. Since with fours here, you only have two bowls. After you throw your first, you can come down and look. I'm not too confident on the ruling if leads or seconds can come and look? I don't believe so. I believe vices and skips. After you throw your first bowl, you can come and look at the head, see if there's anything you want to see. Just as Margaret is doing now, chatting with Tessa, seeing what the strategy they want to have. If this was a provincial championship or a national championship, it would be timed to give you, I think you have maybe a minute and a half potentially to throw your bowl. And so this and is... how many opportunities do you get in a game? Do you get three? To walk down and look? Yeah. You can walk down any, every end if you want to, um, okay. but you just have to throw however many bowls first. So in this case, Margaret has to throw her first bowl and then she can go and look at the second one. So here's Margaret Sutton. After she's chatted with Tessa, we'll see what she does. Again, going outside to the right, trying to bring it back in. It will, and I'm not sure whether or not that's enough of a block 
but it's certainly out there in a long guard position that will make it difficult for Quebec to get around it and then inside to knock the Ontario ball away, away from being right beside the jack. Precisely. And that was the second ball from lead Heather uh, Stevens. It was. It, and it's staying, it stayed in play here this entire end. Celia Roussel again wants to discuss things with Ann Morissette. A lot at stake, especially with Quebec down 7 2 here in the seventh end. We're reaching the halfway point now. Well, you don't want to get too far down. You don't. You really don't. You want to try and get that momentum back again, even just getting one point so that you're starting to count again, getting that confidence back. Yes, some people might call it cauterizing the wound. <laughs> they might. <laughs> I'm curious if Celia will come the other side. Since well, more than that, Margaret put her bowl out front on the right, maybe Celia will come on the left. Well, Anne's here. talking about coming in from the left. We'll see what happens. Maybe moving the Ontario bowl, hitting it, will move the jack to the right They're there. They're coming in from the left. Is it enough? There's a bump, a little kiss, but the Ontario Bowl yes. remains in shot position, and now we come to shot stones, and Ontario has the hammer. Quebec... Oh, Quebec has the hammer, excuse me. Quebec has the hammer after Ontario scored two in the sixth. So now, Tessa McKechnie figure out trying to figure out what to do. I, my call is to block. I would block as well. Celia got rid of one of the blocks that were out front there. So it's it's pretty open on the left-hand side here. And since the bowl is very next to the jack, you just need to hit on the bowl and the jack is going to pop. It's going to pop to the right. And there are some Ontario bowls there, but there's also Quebec bowls over there too. Now, if Quebec does make contact with the shot bowl, that's going to move the jack as well. Exactly. So all kinds of scenarios could possibly happen here in the final two stones for each of Team Ontario and Team Quebec. Here's Tessa McKechnie, the Ontario skip. We'll see if she puts in a block. Or maybe she'll draw another in. Trying to get a bump. Ooh, she well. does, and a lovely shot to sit to greatly positioned to right behind the jack so if Anne tries to move the jack now how perfect is that it was pretty pretty perfect yes she used a bit of the Quebec bowl to rub and come back around but very well done that's just playing the board exactly <laughs> using what's there using all of the bowls to your advantage here's Anne Morissette with her first of two, trying to get through and drives it right through into the trough. No, it stays alive just at the back of the court. And now Tessa McKechnie, I think she's, I, she's got to put up a guard here. I would, I would 100%. Now that she's got two in the head, it's not just the one not terrible there anymore. I would, I would block it. But as we said before, guards are hard to position. We'll see where she goes. And she's a little wide and a little long, leaving the jack and the two Ontario scoring balls wide open. We'll see what Anne does. It looks like Celia is telling her not to hit it too hard, which is true. There are some Ontario balls in the back there. You just want to bump it a bit, bump the jack, so that it moves to the Quebec Bulls that are on the right-hand side there. Here's Morissette. The final ball here in seven. Gets the bump, but not enough to move the jack, and it will be two for Ontario. At least, well, it, from this angle, it looks like two for Ontario. It's at least one. They might be measuring now. But that first bowl was still Heather Stevens from the very beginning. Lead bowls. 
And we talked about the importance of that lead position we at did. the top of this program. Uh, oh, looks like just one. Just one for Ontario. So they lead it now eight to two. After seven. After seven ends, we are at the halfway point here in this Governor General's Rose Bowl match. Between and Ontario you see it just Ontario. behind that gentleman with, uh, in the, just to the left side of your picture, you can see the glass bowl. That is the Rose Bowl, first presented in 1993. And they've continued here as Heather Stevens delivers the jack to start the eighth. So we are now going into the second half of the game here. Quebec needs to start counting again. Yeah, I was just going to ask you whether or not uh, they're feeling a little sense of urgency here. They might be. To be fair, they still have seven more ends to go. Seven is a lot, but if Ontario keeps getting one or two, the hole is just going to keep getting bigger. They need to start making their way out. Well, they trail by six now. Quebec does Quebec with Ontario in the driver's seat at the halfway point here in this match. Here's Veronique Collard. I wonder how much it has to do with Ontario being from this club here. If they maybe they played on this green earlier. In the a little home field advantage. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. But there's a good little bump from Kalar moving the jack back to the back of the court and Quebec sitting one shot ball. But now it is again off center and making it difficult for the bowlers to stay in the green here. Here's Heather Stevens with that ball to the outside. Heather Stevens with well another done. beauty. Great shot. Heather is bowling very well. Very, very well. Her ball, the only scoring ball of the seventh end. And it sat there for a long time. It never moved. It never moved. There's Collard riding the center line. That's moving to the left. The jack on the left bumps just a little kiss of the Ontario ball, and it moves to the back of the court, still in play. Good position to have since we're playing near the back here. So we have other Ontario and Quebec teams playing all of the greens further away from us. I noticed there was a jack measurement happening. We talked about the jack needing to be a certain length from the, t the tip of the mat to where the jack is. And if... Beyond the hog line. Exactly, beyond the hog line. And if the mat has been moved up, the jack has to go that much further past the hog line. And if there's any contention about it, they can call the umpire and they bring out the long tape measure <laughs> to see, is it long enough? Or is it not? And that one from Trisha Robertson is quite outside. short. Outside. <laughs> is it? No, they're leaving it in place, so it's obviously still in the court. Is or it? maybe they're taking it off. Yeah, they're taking it off. It looked a bit too far. A tad wide, and with the jack over on that left side, it's going to make it really difficult to get at. But Sandra Mitchell wasting no time in getting this one in play and Sandra Mitchell great. coming up with a great shot. Very well done. Coming in closer than Heather's bowl there. So now Quebec is sitting one. But getting to the outside of the court and then bringing the bowl back in. Exactly. Not an easy thing to do. It is not. We've seen on that side it's quite tricky. Let's see what Trisha does with her second bowl here. Trisha Robertson, Ontario, well in control of this one, but Quebec coming back strong here in the eighth. And again, Sandra Mitchell 
right away, not wasting any time. And she's got the weight down perfectly. Two for Quebec at this point, all because of Sandra Mitchell. She knew the shot and she could do it twice. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the illustration of of knowing exactly what you're doing. Doing it once is fine, mm -hmm. but doing it twice in a row, exactly. That, then then you know that uh, okay, my weight's pretty good today. Exactly. It's illustrating that you do have control of your weight and your line. It wasn't just a fluke the first time around. I think well, she's not gonna it have would be for me. <laughs> and let it turn you just need a bit more that. practice, in. Then you'd be right in there. Am I on? Celia Roussel with Quebec in control of this one. The Jack outside on the left side of the court. How's that? After being bumped on a really great roll from Veronique Collar at the beginning of this end. Looks like Celia's a bit short. And that's out. They'll be taking that off. It looks like it. Hang on. Are you good? That's good? Oh, that's out. Yeah. Okay, whatever. And both teams have agreed that that ball was out. And it will come off. And Margaret Sutton gets prepared to deliver. And again, both teams using that similar path. And this is Margaret Sutton to the jack. Gives it a bump. And Ontario might be sitting shots, shot ball right now from this angle. It looks like it's very, very close between Ontario and Quebec. Very close. Great shot by Margaret. Following the path that Sandra Mitchell had shown us earlier with her balls. Celia trying to come down here. I don't know if she has the weight. She looks a bit short. But again, traffic in front. Exactly, traffic in front. Although, if Ontario is sitting, Quebec wants to... Be able to get there. Exactly. <laughs> I think my dad always said, if you're down in the head, if you're not counting, you don't want to be short. You want to at least get there. <laughs> and yet another scenario and it's been almost every end, with the possible exception of that last end, the seventh, where Heather Stevens, her lead, one of her lead bowls, her second bowl, stayed in a scoring position. It's been all skips in this one, and now it would appear that uh, the skips are, are going to play a pivotal role here in this eighth end as well. It looks that way. It does indeed. We'll see if Tessa can draw another one in there. Maybe Ontario can get two points. Or, and Morissette might knock oh, Margaret's bowl out of there and sit for three. That would be a good shot to have as well. Here's Tessa McKechnie. She's looking good. Indeed. That one definitely inside the Quebec bowls. One, possibly two for Ontario here. We'll see if Anne can follow the same path. And, and Ontario leads eight to two, but they haven't overwhelmed. Each end, they've been one or two points, and mm -hmm. they just chip away, chip away, mm -hmm. and they do add up. Great and shot. what a great shot there from Anne Morrison. Gives the Ontario bowl a bump and then rests directly behind the jack. Okay, Great okay, shot. Wait, Resting right behind the jack is a difficult bowl to remove for Tessa here. We'll see if she can chip it away or even move the jack over back to the Ontario Bulls. Her second and final bowl here in the eighth. Coming in with some weight. McKechnie with some speed gets the hit and the bump into the trough and didn't necessarily hit what she wanted to hit. And now, Ann Morissette with an opportunity to get a couple here. And you know that her and Celia Roussel will be conferencing. They will, seeing if they can get rid of that Ontario Bowl. I can't see now if it's still... There's two Ontario Bowls there. Are there still two? Both from Margaret Sutton. 
There's two Ontario Bulls, there's two Quebec Bulls in the scoring area, but from this vantage point, it's very difficult to determine anything other than shot bowl here, and that's the one directly behind the jack for Team Quebec. Precisely. And Morissette. Knows what she wants to do now. Now it's a case of Being able delivering. To do exactly. Following through with what she wants to do, what she knows she can do. We've seen how well she's been bowling already so far today. Going right to left. Changing it up a bit. And that is going away. That one won't factor in the scoring, but one for Quebec. They are back counting. They're counting, but they're down eight to three after eight complete ends. And Ontario gets the hammer back in nine. They do. And we saw how Tessa used the hammer last time to get the scoring back. We'll see how Quebec uses the jack they have now. It looks like they're again moving the mat up a bit, trying to change the perception of the distance. And depth perception is so important in this game. It really is. If you're having a hard time determining how far the jack is, it'll mess with your weight. Are you going to throw too heavy or too light? Perception is really everything. And the jack will be toward the back of the court. But they're up about 10 or 12 feet from the trough, which will make this, from a weight perspective, very, very similar to what they've been throwing. Roughly, exactly. But the perception of the jack being closer to the, the backboard there, thinking it's longer than it actually is, having to adjust your weight. Seems like Ronnie does here with her first. Can she get her bowl on the cat from the beginning? Well, she's found the weight beautifully and sits shot stone for the time being. And Heather Stevens comes out. She went in and put the hat on. The sun beating down here, but that will dry out the greens and perhaps make them a little faster. That's exactly it. And again, that's something you need to adjust for. If the greens are getting faster, not need to throw quite as much weight with your bowl. Oh, and Heather Stevens delivers a jam again. Very well done. That shot very similar to the one that she delivered in six. Precisely. We'll see if she can get another one on the jack or Veronique might get even closer. Here's Veronique Kalar. Going right to left this time. If she doesn't hit the jack, she wants to hit the Ontario Bull and just misses it on the right side. That had a lot of speed. It did. She wanted to hit something and she didn't want it to stay. <laughs> We've seen Heather Bull so far. Let's see if she can get another one. Well, she's found that groove. She wants it to turn. Tessa McKechnie wants it to turn as well, but a little outside her initial line. And Ontario still with shot stone as Sandra Mitchell gets set to deliver her first of two. We saw how well she bowled last end. I'll be curious to see if she can get one closer. She's riding that center line. Will it stay on it? It starts to creep over and then leaks left. And from this point, it looks like it's still Ontario by about three or four inches. That sounds about right. But now Quebec has two on the left side there. So if the jack moves, they'll be sitting three. Now Trisha Robertson. side as well wants to get a bump she bumps the second Quebec 
bowl and then rests at the back. It's still Ontario, but the jack still completely exposed. A bit surprising to me she came from the right, just because Quebec has two on the left side there if the jack moves. And this is a lovely delivery as well. Very nice. That one from Sandra Mitchell. And she has been clutch all day. She has. We saw her two bowls last end. They went right in and they were sitting too. Trisha Robertson. Coming in again from the right to left, hoping to stay up a bit further. It's got too much speed, and that one rolls away, and she troughs it. She does. I'm sure she wish she could have that one back too. Pull the string. Mm -hmm. Bring it back. <laughs> See you, Roussel. And it worked. And Anne Morissette. Giving her some grass here, showing her. Yeah, showing her to let the left foot broom. Mm hmm, exactly. Comparing it to Kirk. And that is right on that foot. Will it turn in just to a little too much speed? And it yeah, rests at the way. back of the court. Good place to be in case the jack moves. Very good place. Because, yes, if the bulls go into the ditch at the end, if they have not touched the cap before going into the ditch, they are dead and have to be removed. But if a bull touches the jack first, they get some chalk marks on it, saying they're still alive. And if they go into the ditch, they, they can still stay there because they have touched the cap before going into the ditch. Margaret Sutton. With some good speed, does it have enough to climb in? It doesn't, but it does set up a bit of a block it really for does. Team Quebec trying to get in from that left side. Let's see who's going to try again <clears throat> from the right here. We had too much speed the last time. This time it doesn't have the line and it moves out far to the left and shouldn't really have too much bearing on the end itself. I don't believe so. Though. The weight was much better, just the line. As you say, it's a bit trickier to bowl than you would think, having to adjust the line and the weight to have them both perfect to have your bowl where you want it to be. Margaret Sutton understands the importance of this bowl. Because really, there's only the one Ontario bowl in the head right now. I would suggest getting another in just in case the Ontario one gets moved. This one might be it. Little bump. Nope, doesn't stay in the pocket. And again, the jack has remained exposed the entire end. And now we come down to skip bowls again. And they have been so important. These skips have really bowled tremendously well so far in this one in the first eight ends. They really have. That's, as my father would say, that's why the skips are paid the big buck, the big bucks. <laughs> Your dad's a skip, no doubt. Of course he is. <laughs> and this truly is a game that you can play for life. It really is. It really is. Like I say, I started when I was nine. I have every intention of playing until I'm 99, <laughs> if I live that long. Excuse me, please, Al. It definitely is a family sport. You can bring your children, your grandchildren. Everyone can play. And they even have equipment that if you have a trouble, trouble um, bending over it, you can have a launcher to, move, to throw the bowl for you. So you can continue to play, even if you're having mobility issues. Looks like Anne's coming in here. And more set. Great and shot. The Great skips shot. do it again. And Morissette sitting shots. Making it look easy. Just, yeah, walk up. Okay, another day at the office. Exactly. Um ho. <laughs> 
the Otessa. Jumpers. She's got some speed on this. She wants to keep it straight. She gets in riding the line and just curls to the left at the last and just off the Quebec ball and the jack. And now it would be incumbent upon Morissette to try and throw exactly the same ball that she did the last end and that's exactly what she's doing and she seems to have found her spot that one may not have enough but an absolutely perfect block exactly. for team quebec exactly making it quite difficult for tessa here to see and tessa mckechnie wants to go down and have a look to see exactly how much room she has you know, exactly. Precision, so important, but this one might be a big ask. It might be. It might be. The way that the Quebec Bulls are positioned out front and behind, making it a bit difficult. Also, note there's only, looks like there's just one Ontario Bull near the jack right now. Tessa won't want to move that. If she moves that, they might be giving up two or three. Or if she bumps that lead bull as a guard at the front the red one mm -hmm. does she knock that into a scoring position and give quebec two instead of just one but exactly. in all fairness quebec needs two they do here down eight three in the ninth eight five is a much easier score to come back from than eight four exactly exactly Although Tessa might still want to keep the hammer if she gives up one point here, still keeping the hammer for the next end. Yeah, there's so many different strategic options are presented to you in the late stages of any kind of match. Exactly, exactly. Not wanting to give up this last bowl to the other team to see what they can do. McKechnie's bowl is away. The final here in, and a great shot by McKechnie. Very well done. Unbelievable. Knocks the jack away and Ontario scores one. Fantastic shot. She had just the right weight and line to come in and move the jack. Again, skip bolts. Good thing she had that hammer to have that last shot to come in. Nine, and move it away. nine, I'm sorry, Christine. Nine three, Ontario as Tessa McKechnie comes up big, and we have been singing the praises of those two ladies this entire game, and boy, they certainly are showing us some stuff. Both. And Morissette on the left, Tessa McKechnie on the right with some fantastic bowling in the skip position so far in this one. Fantastic indeed. Let's have some fun. Now that uh, Ontario has the jack again, they might be wanting to have a bit of a shorter jack. They've been pulling, bowling a bit long the last few ends. Okay. Okay. Looks like Tessa's wanting a bit of a shorter one. We'll see where Heather puts it. Thank you, Heather. And the jack is up, but the mat is back. And again, similar throws to what we've seen so far in this one. This the tenth. We're getting to the late stages in this one. We'll play 14 ends, but the distances that these two teams have been working with for most of this match have been very, very similar. They have been. The mat and jack placement has varied, but the length itself is kept pretty much constant. So, Heather Stevens in position, and Morissette giving some grass for Veronique here. Veronique he giving her something to throw at. And that one it riding the good. center line, but it might be a little heavy. And it is. Perfect line, just the weight. Come on up this side. Don't give her a second. 
And Heather Stevens kind of throwing it an inside out. She's a lefty, so she's got to get the jack and the and the bowl to move in the opposite direction. And boy, did she ever find it there, but an inch behind the jack in an absolutely perfect position. She's showing us very well how to pull. That's for sure. Yeah, if you want to be behind, you want to be right here. Here's Veronique Collard with her second of two. And again, a bit wide. that heavy and wide. And Ontario in a position to score two if the end were to complete itself at this point. Indeed. But we still have the second vice and those important skip bowls to come. Lots can change. And here's Trisha Roberts. Even nice and narrow. Quebec is feeling a bit of the pressure now that this is the 10th end. Needing to get some more bulls in there. Trailing by six. They are. They, they got a, a point. They started counting again, but Ontario getting it right back. Quebec has points in the first the fifth and the eighth. Ontario scored one in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, two in the sixth, and singles in seven and nine. Ontario has been consistently scoring. That is what we see. But it really has been back and forth and coming down to those last two bowls by the skips as well. Whatever way you see, you can do it. Yep. Heather Stevens is still shot there. Let's see if Trisha can draw another one in close. It looks like just Quebec Bulls at the back there. Good on you, Margaret. Tessa might be wanting a back bull just to be safe, just in case something happens. Trisha Robertson going to the right side, trying to bring it in, gets to the center and a little bump of the Ontario ball, but Ontario still sitting two, maybe even three. Possibly three. Quebec Bulls are a bit further back. We see how Sandra Mitchell responds. Now that there's a bit there's a bit more move, uh, space now between the bowl and the jack for her to fit through. And here's Mitchell. Andrew Mitchell rolls just by the jack, but ahead of the second Ontario ball. And Ontario still in a shot position, but now just, just one. We talked about the skips and their consistent bowling uh, on Team Ontario. Heather Stevens, the lead, uh, just having a tremendous day. Sandra Mitchell for Team Quebec, having an equally good day for the Fleur de Lis. For sure, for sure. And a lovely day to have it too. The, we're calling for rain, but not till later. A little later on in the day. The breeze having a nice uh, balance with the heat that's going on here as well. Well, you must be in the chair that gets the breeze because I'm not <laughs> feeling it. I'm just watching the uh, leaves blow on the trees here <laughs> and the umbrellas that keep flying away at different points. <laughs> Here's Celia Roussel. And that one, well shy. And quite wide as well. A, a guard, but maybe not necessarily a great positioned one. Here's Margaret Sutton trying to ride the line and she well does beautifully but the jack still exposed quebec can get around that in ontario in a position to score two see they're now switching sides coming left or right her weight looks better it does but it's starting to leak to the right and that 
won't factor in unless the jack moves. Exactly. And now switching again to see what Tessa and Ann will do. Quebec with the hammer here in 10. Trailing by six. Needing to start counting again. In the Governor General's Rose Bowl, one of the premier events in the lawn bowling season here in the nation's capital and has been since 1928. Amazing. The 92nd Governor General's Tournament. Teams playing against other teams to get the chance to play in this tournament here today. Not just walking in, needing to fight their way to get to where they are right now. Hoping to get their names on that Rose Bowl trophy. Tessa McKechnie. Trying to leak that one in. It's got good weight, but just not enough. But that might be three for Ontario. It could be. It depends on how far back the Quebec Bulls are on the right-hand side there. And now Ann Morissette feeling the heat a little here. Quite possibly. But again, being confident, knowing what she wants to do. Not only the heat of the day, the heat of the moment. Exactly. <laughs> Looking good, though. Looking really good. Is it going to turn in? Can it get through? It does, and what a great shot from Ann Morissette. Looks like she might have gotten shot there. Hard to say from this angle, but definitely close. Margaret Sutton in there having a look. One Quebec. They are in shot position, and they have the hammer. This is the final ball of the 10th end for Ontario. Can Tessa change? the outcome right now. McKechnie has bowled beautifully today. That one riding the line and it's by and that will go long. And now with an opportunity to score two, it's Ann Morissette trying to get Quebec back in this one with just four ends remaining after this tenth. As we said before, two points definitely better than one to close the gap here between Ontario and Quebec. And made a lovely shot. Can she do it again? Looks like she's coming in from the left again. I don't know if she has the weight. Not gonna get there, and it's one for Quebec. They might be measuring, maybe, maybe. Maybe two, or maybe, maybe just the single. Hard to say, we'll have to wait and see. Again, measuring to the Quebec Bowl to see if it's closer than It's definitely Ontario. Quebec. From here, it definitely looks like it. One, one for Quebec. One for Quebec here. Great shot again from Ann Morissette as these skips continue to trade punches. They really are. It's back and forth, back and forth. Again, we see Ronick moving the mat up again, trying to change the perception. Just throw a little spanner in the works. <laughs> and just make it different. Give the opposition a different look, but when you give the opposition a different look, you're also giving yourself exactly. a different look too. Exactly. Being confident on your ability to adjust as well. If they can adjust better than you can, that's not gonna work out well for you. Well, Veronique Collard isn't gonna have to move that. They move that ball like a half an inch. She's rolled it pretty straight down that green. <laughs> which is good, meaning she doesn't give Heather the chance to place the jack. It's now placed where Quebec wants it to be, and we'll see if she can get her bowl close to the jack right from the beginning. Going from the right side, trying to get it to curl in, but 
A little too wide and a little too much heat. Just a bit. Again, Heather bowling very well today. I fully expected her to see, be close to the jack as she has been. We'll see what happens. It might come in. That one's going to turn in beautifully. Very well done. And again, Heather Stevens <laughs> likes that storm. shot. That's the third that she's put very, very close to the jack being in a similar position. She knows that side. She knows what grass she needs and what weight she needs. Very well done. Veronica now switching sides coming from the left. Rides it down the center line, right on the jack, and just rolls to the right, but in good position. It didn't go too far, which is good. Still within play. Good delivery by Veronique Collard. And now the final delivery of this 11th for Heather Stevens. She likes that left side. She's coming in, trying to set up a guard and rides it right on the center line. Tessa McKechnie likes it, but I think she'd like it even more if it was directly on the center line. I believe so, or even if it was just a bit closer to the jack, too. Sandra Mitchell, who's had a great game for Team Quebec in this one, and she's continuing to show her magic. Very well done. Might still be Heather for shot here, but Sandra is a very close second. Come in, Sandra, come on. Trisha Robertson. Looks like Tessa wants her to come on the right side here. Maybe coming to that back Quebec. Again, not wanting to get out too far as it doesn't want to come back on that side. Ontario in a shot position. See if we can maintain it for the end. Robertson's delivery from the right side. That one leaking left, and that one won't be in play. Not unless the Jack makes a sudden movement way back. It's got too much cover to get through in, in behind it that uh, Heather Stevens bowl directly behind the jack, which would make it difficult to get back into that position Precisely. where Robertson put it. Here's Sandra Mitchell with a great delivery on her first attempt, and she's got it again, moving right into shot position. Very well done. Sandra Mitchell with a great ball that is directly behind the jack, and it might even be leading on it. It looks like it's, it's touching from here. Very, very well done. Makes it difficult for Trisha now to try and get closer. Almost needing to follow Sandra down the same path she had before. Lots of speed. Robertson trying to go wide or right down the line and just misses it as that ball turned right at Albuquerque. It did. It took a turn and just kept going. Gonna break just a little bit at the end. I'm wondering if Quebec is wanting to guard this shot they have now. The jack is still. Well, Roussel is going from the left side, trying to get it to turn, but it's again got too much speed. Sandra Mitchell had that weight perfectly, didn't she? She did. She did. It came in and just came and sat. She had the perfect weight. See if Margaret Sutton can either move Sandra's bowl out of the way or even the jack, just opening it up to make it a bit easier to access. Looking good so far. Don't know if it's going to curl enough, though. Not enough. Again in the back. Be a little nice. too narrow a line, I believe, and the speed has to be absolutely perfect in order for it to turn. And Sandra Mitchell 
not only did it once, but did it twice on uh, her opportunity here in the 11th. We play 14 ends. And with Ontario leading by five, it's getting, it's getting close. more and more ominous for Team Quebec with time running out. Yes, but they're coming up to bat. They are, they know what they need and they are getting their balls in there. It's got to be something in their eye. But if it's too well, much Sandra time, Mitchell in there for one shot stone or shot ball, rather. Ontario directly behind. But Quebec in for one. And perhaps they're content to just chip away at that Ontario lead, too. It's possible if, you know, you just keep getting one, maybe two. There's still enough ends to chip that away to come back and win it. Well, if you're aware that if Ontario is that good defensively, you know you're going to have to just take what you can get when you can get it. Exactly. And Roussel plays that one wide right. And now up to the skips again. And Morris at in a good position being shot right now. Tessa needing to make some kind of change for Ontario to have the score. And Ontario with the hammer here in 11. So it looks like Margaret Sutt still has a bowl left to come. So not yet the skips. One more vice bowl here. And Margaret Sutton has uh, played an integral part in Ontario's success in this one so far. She has. I find every member of each of their teams has been coming up and having great bowls in there when they need to be, making the shots that need to happen. And here's Margaret Sutton trying to get it to curl in. It's got decent weight, but just not enough. Just another couple feet, and she would have been right there. Although now she's in a placement that could make it difficult for Tessa to get her ball in there. There is a port between the Jack and the second Quebec ball. And Tessa McKechnie having a quick look at that too. And now discussing things with her vice, Margaret Sutton. I think I might take that port. I think she just might. That would, if I was, if I was Tessa, I would, I would take that shot. It almost needs to be on the left side here. The right side, you don't want to push the jack closer to the pool. You want to try and separate the two, at least if you're Tessa McKechnie. Well, Ann Morissette not taking a lot of grass here, trying to ride the line. The speed looks good. Can she find that opening little bump of the Quebec ball? And now I'm not sure whether or not, no, it's definitely Ontario in second shot position, but Quebec still in a scoring position here as Tessa McKechnie wants to get a little bit more information before she delivers her first of two here in 11. Although that port that we talked about might not be there anymore. It's even more blocked right now. We'll see what she can do with the pole here. Margaret giving her some grass, telling her how wide she needs to be. Lots of speed on this one. Will it turn in just wide? A little bit of a kiss, but not enough to move it. Not enough. That was Margaret's bowl that she kissed, though. If she had been able to bump it, she could have bumped it in for shot. We'll see what Anne does here now. I'm not sure what, uh, what Anne will do. Might put another block out front here. It's a bit difficult to get to the jack. That one may not have enough to get there. It's starting to turn, but it's wide left. And now does Tessa McKechnie try the same shot? She's coming down to have a look. I would too. See, 
how much space there is between Margaret's bull bear and Anne's guard that's yeah. now in front of the jack. Yeah. My bull is different. All right. So, um, maybe, maybe giving up just one. Maybe Tessa will be okay with that and continuing to have the hammer for the next end. We'll see. Definitely Sandra Mitchell is still shot though. That bull has not moved, it's still there. And what a fantastic shot that was. It really was. So discussions ensue. And this, the final bull of the 11th end. Ontario leading nine to four. Quebec in shot position here. And uh, only three more ends after this. Three. Three? Only three more? 12, 13, and 14. Mm -hmm. So do you throw parking lot weight here, try to keep it straight and, and knock everything around? I, it depends on what is knocked around. If Tessa well, can get Sandra's bull out. She's wide. She's not way doing wide, much. Way wide. And it will be one Quebec. Looks like one. One for Quebec. One for Quebec. So they chip away, and it's going to be nine to five with Ontario going into the 12th end with the hammer again. Again. Not able to take advantage, but again, you have to wonder whether or not Quebec is taking advantage of their opportunities to get more on the scoreboard when they have an opportunity to steal like that. Mm -hmm. Wanting two points, maybe even three. We haven't seen more than two points happening in this game. Very, very low score, back and, and forth. And in just three of the 11 ends, mm -hmm. has there been more than just a single award? And that's when you know it's a good game, back and forth. Both teams bowling incredibly well, as we've seen. And again, the Jack in a very, very similar position mm -hmm. to what it's been. And that's, I, I wonder if Quebec might have just uh, given Ontario a little bit more to think about by playing the Jack up close this time and, and just, I guess, hoping that uh, their weight is off and yours is on. Exactly. But again, hoping that your weight is on <laughs> and not... Uh, well, you take... You, I, I suppose you would ponder that opportunity only if you were playing very well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not bowling well, you can't really count on yourself to make those shots. And again, Heather Stevens taking the hat off. Maybe to see a bit better. Maybe a bit too windy. Both first bowls a bit long down at the other end here. We'll see if Franny can get her next bowl closest to the jack here. And Collard hits the jack and knocks it very close to the Ontario bowl. And now Quebec has put Ontario in a scoring position here with Heather Stevens second. They have. It was a good shot by Veronique. Just a unfortunate result moving it closer to the Ontario Bowl. And still to Ontario as Stevens gives her own bowl a little bump. She has the line in which she knew where to put the bowl. Put it right there again. And here's Sandra Mitchell. She's had a great day for Team Quebec. Looks good so far. And Anne Morissette calling on her again. Little bump. <laughs> Quebec in scoring position now. Great shot. Moving the jack, but also following with it. That's what you want to follow with it so you continue to have the shot goal. Well, all kinds of uh, traffic in front of that jack. Two Ontario bowls, one Quebec bowl in the shot position. And now Trisha Robertson will try and eliminate that. 
we'll see if she tries to move the bull or the jack. Since the bulls and jack are fairly close, it is a bigger target for her to have. Although coming from the right to left. Close. Great shot. Oh, great shot. And has the, the jack gone out? It has. Has it? They're checking. It is. It is out of bounds. At least that is what. Oh, now Morissette goes to the line. Yeah, it's out. So now they move it back into the middle. Yes, to the six foot mark from the <laughs> ditch board there. And now Quebec is in a shot position they are. as a result of that. Exactly. Unfortunate for Ontario moving okay. that jack and now putting it near where Quebec's bulls are. But still a great shot by Trish Robertson. And Sandra Mitchell once again rolling that one into the trough. Just a bit too far. So there's not much room there now. Between the jack and the bull? The jack and the scoring bull and the Quebec bull that is out front. Yes, the it's a very good position that Quebec is in right now. They have a bull right next to the jack and one blocking it. They're, they're sitting nicely, I would say. I would just want to have one behind just for safety purposes. Maybe draw some more in, count more than one, maybe count two. But it all depends on what Ontario does to counter. Well, we might be going right to the 14th with this one. We'll go right to the end. The teams will fight to the finish, I have no doubt. Robertson taking a little more time than she's normally accustomed to. Rolls that one down the center line, rolls the jack right into the, the trough, and what a shot from Robertson. Great shot. So since Trisha's bulk touched the jack before going in. Her bull is still alive in the ditch, and the jack is now in the ditch as well. And Morissette placing a water bottle there to see where the jack is. And oh, yes, using the stake, they have stakes to put in the ground so you can see where the jack and bulls so are. So the jack is in the trough. This is a scenario we have yet to see in this one. Exactly. The jack in the trough on an absolutely fantastic shot from second, Trisha Robertson. And now that bowl is in play. Ontario's scoring one at this point. They are, they are shot. But there is still enough space between the jack and bowl in the ditch for a bowl to come and rest right on the edge and be shot. Quebec can still come and get so shot out of this. The stake is where the jack is. The soap bottle is where the bowl is. Exactly. So the people down at the other end can see where they are in the ditch. But note, since the jack is in the ditch, any other bowls that go into the ditch now will be dead because none of them have touched the cat. So Celia's bowl now in the ditch is taken out of play because it is not alive. Wow, this is an interesting scenario for Ontario. It is, for both teams, really. Ontario wanting to, I'm sure, get more than one point to increase that gap they have. Quebec wanting to get a point or two, if they can, to close the gap. But it being very, very difficult to draw your bowl right to the ditch board. Here's Margaret Sutton. Does she have the weight to make it all the way there? Just shy. But might be second shot. Might be second closest. It would appear to be at this point. Quebec needs to get another bowl closer. They have to get one in the trough. Well, they can't get it in the trough. No, they can't. They'd have to take it out. <laughs> exactly. They need to get it close, but not quite in the trough there. Celia's trying. This is the point where you want the cigar. <laughs> Close and the cigar, exactly. <laughs> Take it a little narrow one, Margaret. Just look behind this one. So it can't be quite Ontario's in a good position right now in the sense that they just need to keep drawing bulls closer than the Quebec bulls 
that are still, I would say, what, two feet? Maybe more than that. Well, not two feet. Um, two meters, six feet from the ditch right now. Oh, Margaret Sutton trying to get that one down again, but it is going to come up a little shy. But more traffic. True. And not a lot of room no. down there. No, and also, again, needing the precision to have the right way to make it all the way there, but not too far to fall in to the ditch either. Because as we said, it's going to be taken out if it falls in. We haven't seen the skips needing to throw that okay. precision weight Okay, strange yet. scenario. The delivery from that end hits the jack in the trough. Does it stay? It does not because the jack is already in the trough. Okay. Because anything that's already in the ditch is already in, in the, the ditch. ditch. Yeah. Good question, though. We'll see what uh, Ann Morissette does here. And there's a look at a scenario that we had yet to see. And it took us 12 ends to do it. But we got here, we got to see an end that doesn't typically happen unless you're playing near the ditch board as they have been having longer ends. This is Ann Morissette. A bit short. And a little bit of a bump. So Ontario's sitting two right now. Looks like two. Tessa just needs to get to where Margaret is showing her on the green there to be for three. She'll be coming in from the left side. Most likely, yes. Not a lot of room on the right. Nope, not a lot. You can bump the bowls that are there closer, but it would take a lot of weight to bump them close enough to be into the count. Tessa McKechnie. Oh. Little bump, and that is not good, although it does look like Ontario still maybe second shot. No, it looks like it's going to be only one for Ontario at this point, with Anne Morissette set to deliver her final ball of this 12th end. Indeed, unfortunate Tessa McKechnie bumping Anne Morissette's ball closer for second shot. We'll see. Can Ann bump hers further or draw it even right to the ditch? Hitting the bulls out front there. Ontario still sitting one at this point. Or two. Maybe two. Margaret Sutton is showing us two points here for Ontario. She's saying it's close. I don't know how she's going to get closer. Now, Margaret Sutton is illustrating that there is some room on the right side to come through, but it has to be an absolutely perfect delivery. It has to be wide enough to get around the traffic yeah, up front. That's what McKechnie's trying. Does she have the weight to make it? She looks like it, it looks might good. be too much. Just a bit And too it much. is. So it's one Ontario, I believe, but there may be a measurement for two. Now, since we're in this case with the jack in the ditch, for measurement purposes, they would measure from the bowl to the jack this time instead of the jack to the bowl because the jack is what? in the ditch. One Ontario. So now 10-5 with two ends to play. Ontario in control, leading by five here in the Governor General's Rose Bowl. Ontario is in a fairly good position right now, but Quebec needs to, I would say, at least count this end. Note that there are eight bowls. Each team has eight bowls, so you can have a maximum of eight points an end, so Quebec can still come back and win this. It just makes it more difficult to get all of your bowls in there and counting. Dan Mooney, Christine Shukneck, and our entire Rogers TV crew, so happy to have you along for the 92nd Governor General's Tournament from the Highland Park Lawn Bowling Club here in the nation's capital. 10-5, Ontario leads in the 13th end. We'll play 14. Only two more to go. Heather throwing the jack in the ditch, so now Quebec gets to try and place the jack. And they move the mat up. And Quebec seems to favor that, moving the mat up. 
Veronique Collard will put the jack in play. It'll more than likely be in a similar spot to what we've seen. That's what these skips, oh, they're moving the jack or the mat up a little further, trying to give Ontario a different look and perhaps take advantage of that. Indeed, the difficulty now is knowing how far to throw the jack so that it's still far enough, but not falling in the ditch. Past the hog line. And significantly past the, the hog line. Uh, the looks like it's far enough. They might they might want to measure it. It's hard to see. Looks like they're happy with it. So it, even though the jack is past the hog line, the mat is up far enough that it's still a fairly short end right now. And this is the kind of thing that Quebec takes advantage of it. They're shaking things up a little, and they need by to do all it. means, Christine, they've got to do something in order to get back in this one quickly, trailing by five with just two ends to play. They do. They need to do something. Try and get one point, even two or three, to close this gap to make it easier for them to come back. Because, as we said before, they had a lot of ends, but now they don't have as much anymore. There's only two more ends to go. The time is ticking away. And Morissette cheering on Veronique Collard and that behind the jack. Good placement. Line was good, just a bit heavy. Heather Stevens has had some success coming in from that left side, but with the mat up, it's a different shot, but still a nice delivery from Heather Stevens. Her weight was still very good. Ontario sitting one for sure anyway. But yes, since the distance is shorter, in terms of how much the bull will curl back around, does change. The longer the end, the more it will curl back. And again, similar weight there for Veronique Collard, and that is behind Ontario sitting one here in 13. I'm sure Quebec is feeling the pressure now, needing to get those shots in there. Probably thinking about moving the cat back to Veronique's two bulls back there. It's a short one. Well, something has to happen, and they've got to make something happen. It's not going to happen for them with Ontario playing as sound defensively as they have in this one. Precisely, precisely. Not leaving it just to the skips, having the leads, seconds, and vices putting their bulls in there. And Trisha Robertson with a beauty that comes in directly behind the Jack and Ontario sitting too. Very well done. But Sandra Mitchell, she's had a great day for Team Quebec. Such a great day. She's known her grass and her weight very well. Oh, she's riding that line, trying to get a little bump perhaps, and she's behind the jack as well. So maybe this scenario or this uh, strategy by Team Quebec is backfiring on them a little here. Quite possibly. If Trisha's bull wasn't slightly behind the jack, it would be easy for them to move jack back to their bulls. But since Trisha's a bit behind, it's not quite as simple as it was before. Looking like Tessa wanting Trisha to be a bit behind again. Having a bit more protection between the jack and those back of back holes. And that one okay. goes through the entire party. Quite far. But if the jack goes out of play, Trisha's bowl is back there for a replacement. If that happens, like we saw it happen before. Ontario sitting two and Sandra Mitchell trying to roll that one and she's had the weight down perfectly all day and she's got it there again was it enough though is ontario still holding hard to say uh, it looks like tessa mckechnie was pointing at one quebec it looks very close from this vantage point but if 
Tess is saying one, I'm gonna believe her. There's Margaret Sutton, Ooh. nudges the jack and puts Ontario back into shot position. Exactly. Now Celia thinking about what she should do to try and get this back into Quebec's favor. She's gonna need a hit, a hit and stick. Hitting that Ontario bull out of the way and staying exactly. There's Celia Roussel. Can she Close. get it around? She nudges her own bowl and Ontario remains in shot position. I'd be curious to see how the Ontario bowl back there is positioned. Is it directly behind the jack or is it to the side? Because Just to the side but behind. Here is Margaret Sutton. She's got some speed on this and it's well outside the mark. Since it's just to the side, it does make it a bit easier for Celia here to hit and stay, as we were saying she probably wants to. Yeah, if you want to play the same hand, you got it. It's gonna be tough because if you narrow the line, you're gonna cross over. Okay. Maybe the conversation back and forth between Anne and Celia, but. Okay, we're getting into the later there. stages. We're going to see a lot more of that. Conversation, exactly. It's getting a bit more uh, serious and intense. Every bowl counts. And since we're in fours, we only, you only have two. Oh, you would need to make them all count. Okay. A bit narrow here, curling. And now it's <laughs> coming down to skip stones again. Tessa McCagney in white with red and black trim for Team Ontario. Quebec in white tops with dark shorts and blue trim. And Tessa McKechnie discussing with Vice Margaret Sutton. And Morissette discussing with Vice Celia Roussel. What are the shots they can make? What needs to be happening? Well, right what now? are the shots they can make here, Christine? I mean, do you... Well, what's, what's the higher percentage shot? <laughs> well, Quebec has a five point deficit right now. They need to at least count one, if not more than one. If I was Ann Morissette, I would be trying to get that Ontario Bowl out of the way and st staying for two, trying at least to get two points so that there's only three point difference between the two teams going for into the final end. Going into the last end, exactly. It's easier to get three points than four points. If I was Tessa, I would try and get another bowl in the head so that there's two bowls in there, maybe even two points going on right now, so that do it makes it do difficult. Do you that, or is a long guard in order? Because they're only going to, they, they've been coming in from one direction. That's the left side. It's hard to say. As we said, guards are hard to place. They're hard to put where you want them to put. But if Tessa has the line and can draw in, I, w I would put one in, in close to the jack right now, just to have another one in there to make it difficult for Anne. Riding that middle line, hits the jack and bumps it into Quebec's favor. That's not good for not Tessa. Not a good shot for Tessa McKechnie. And now Anne Morissette in the driver's seat. Oh, the 14th end could be really interesting here. It's looking that way so far. So a mistake by Ontario skip Tessa McKechnie. She still has one more ball. She does and the jack is fairly open to draw in four shot. We'll see what Ann Morissette does here. Coming in from the right side. Got to get around. Cover runs in and goes back and Celia Roussel likes it, and, but I doubt Tessa McKechnie does. I agree with that. I doubt she is feeling very happy right now. Let's see, can she... Her final delivery her here in 13. Close. Moves it up and bumps that in. Is it enough? I believe the Quebec ball is sitting in shot position with Anne Morissette having one left to deliver here in 13. 
definitely Tesla's shot did cut them down, moving the Ontario Bull closer to the jack, which was good, giving up one point instead of maybe two or three. Uh, here's Ann Morissette with the final ball here in 13. It's got the speed. It's trying to turn, and it gets just inside two for Quebec. Great shot. And boy, did they need that, their first deuce yes. of this match. Needing the two points. There's two for Quebec. It might be three. They're looking. Two for Quebec. And we go to the 14th with Quebec trailing by three. That is manageable. That is much more manageable than five. All you need is three points to tie, four to win. So we go to the final end, Ontario and Quebec here in the Governor General's Rose Bowl. And Ontario leads by three, but you know that they are looking in the rear view mirror just to see how close Quebec really is. They are. They know that they need to get their bulls in there because Quebec is going to be right in there with all of their bulls if they can. Well, they might be looking in the rear view mirror, but the windshield's bigger for a reason. What's ahead of you is more important than what's behind mm -hmm. you. Exactly. And here's Veronique Collar. Gets it over the hog line, but that will be an interesting scenario. It's just maybe five or six feet beyond the hog line. And the mat is up quite a bit. And the mat is up, so Tessa McKechnie going over to have a look. Seeing how far it is, if, if it is long enough, this jack. I don't, I don't believe it is long enough. I think it might be a bit too short. Three and a half paces. I, it looks like it might be short. They're calling the. You're gonna measure. Yes, they're calling the umpires over here with their long measuring tapes to measure from the tip of the mat to where the jack is. And what is the minimum distance that you can have? <laughs> I so wish I sure remembered. Sure <laughs> You'd think I'd know being a mathematician. I don't remember. And a Canadian champion. <laughs> you would think you would think I would know. I just know that it needs to be from the six foot tip of the mat to the hog line. And if you're moving the jack up two paces, the jack needs to go two paces further past the hog line. It needs to maintain that minimum distance. What that distance is could not tell you right now. <laughs> well, they're going to get the tape. Uh, I don't think that they thought this scenario would present itself. <laughs> so in, since the 12th end, we've had a ball, uh, the jack in the trough. Yes. We've, uh, we've seen that. We've seen this measurement now on the delivery of the jack and the placement of the jack at the beginning of the onset of the end. Uh, we've almost seen every potential scenario here. We have. And this Governor General's Rose Bowl could come down to the final shot. I suspect it just might. It just might. Because Ontario has the hammer now for this end. I fully suspect Quebec to have their bowls right near the jack if they can. So Tessa needing to make those shots. Well, Quebec has led the last four ends by a score of four to one. They have really climbed back into this one, but you know, and uh, that is obviously short. So uh, now it would appear that Heather Stevens is going to have an opportunity to get the jack in play. Yes, and she is moving the mat back to the six meter, the uh, six foot mark, that is. Trying to get into a, a distance that Team Ontario is a little more comfortable with. Exactly. Changing things back to the way they... The advantage of having the hammer. Exactly. And now even having both advantages, Ontario gets to put the jack where they want it and have the hammer. Looks like they're maybe wanting a longer 
Jack. We'll see where Heather puts it. Heather Stevens. Oh, that one's going deep. This is going to be interesting. It will be if someone... That's almost six foot line to six foot line. It's almost... Okay, that's a long one. Almost that length. We'll see if someone's going to put it in the ditch again. Wanna come here? So very collard. We'll get things started here. And Anne Morissette issuing some instructions. There'll be a lot more conversation here in this 14th end. I have no doubt. I'm sure we might see the vices going down to take a look, seeing where they want their bulls to be, the skips conversing with their teams. Oh, we have a there's Verity Collard. This will be a a tenuous distance. Uh, they've yet to go this far, and that one trickles into the trough. Again, the difficulty here of throwing it long enough, but not too long, that it goes out of bounds. You heard the collective awe. Oh. Of the crowd, exactly. <laughs> it might come down to which bulls stay on the green. Here's Heather Stevens with decent weight, but did that stay in? I believe it did. They're not moving it. Or just 12 and a half feet wide. Only, only 12 and a half feet. Not too bad. <laughs> but uh, it isn't a lot. Veronique Collard. Put her first one too far this one seems to have much more comfortable weight very well done jack high and ann morissette likes it slightly behind too which is very good ontario now or ontario needing to get a bowl in here because quebec is now shot heather stevens will that be enough good weight and in play so Ann Morissette wants that Ontario ball out. So looking for a takeout here by Sandra Mitchell. She's got She's good close. line. She's got good line just wide, but it stays alive. It stays in the back there. Good preparation for if that jack moves. Because right now Quebec is the only team with those back bulls behind the jack there. Ontario is not going to want to move the jack at this point. Tessa McKechnie over there trying to determine the shot and almost effectively leaving Trisha Robertson to her own devices. <laughs> I'm not sure. I find that... Throw whatever you're comfortable <laughs> with. I find that um, I tend to have teammates who will know what they want to do and I trust that they can make the shots that they that they can see because it looks different from the mad end than it does at the other end this one got away from Robertson and well, stays in the court grid weight but again with that bias it took it way to the left it did not quite what she was wanting I'm sure and the wind has picked up Sandra Mitchell gets that one in play but it, Quite short. It, it shouldn't have much of an impact on this one Quebec running out of, of bowls here they are they need three near the jack right now they have one three to tie forcing an extra end possibly I'm not sure if ties will need to be broken here at the Governor General tournament that one's away. A bit too strong from Trisha. So Trisha Robertson is done, and now we're into Vice Bowls. Celia Roussel trying to get Quebec back in this one. They're sitting one. They need three. Does she have the weight to get there? She's it's wide enough. Is it going to skip in there? No. Not quite. So, 
Now, Margaret Sutton, the Ontario Vice. Knowing she needs to get it down there. Have another bowl in the head. This one riding the center line. It's moving left. Little nudge and then the kiss to the right. And Ontario holds Quebec to one. And one is okay for Ontario. And Morissette wanting to place a bowl directly in front of the two Ontario stones or bowls in the head. Needing to get a second and third point in there. Here's Celia Roussel. The weight looks better. It's coming back into the middle. Roussel with a beauty! Just too far. That may require a measurement, but... Setting up nicely for the back there for Anne Morissette to move the jack back to her Quebec Bulls back there. And here's Margaret Sutton. Ontario does not want to move the jack. No, they do not, unless they're taking it right to the ditch and sitting on it. If that's the shot, then they can definitely play that. Margaret Whoa. Sutton with a beauty! Great shot. To sit shot and getting a well-deserved round of applause here. And we are going to skip bolts okay. here in the 14th, Ontario. Leading 10-7, and now they sit shot bowl with a Governor's General's Rose Bowl at stake. And Tessa McKechnie, very, very pleased, but this is not over yet. No, it's not. Anne still has two bowls. She can still make some shots here. Although Margaret's bowl is very well positioned that it's behind the jack, almost in front of those back to back bowls of Anne's team, making it difficult for her to move the jack back where it needs to be for her to get those three points that she desperately needs right now. Does she have the weight to make it there? Yes. But curling a bit too much. Goes to the left. And now, Tessa McKechnie. If I was Tessa, I would just put maybe one out front. Maybe just another one in the head to make it more difficult for and to even get three points. Margaret Sutton with the big shot here in 14. Great, great shot. Here's Tessa McKechnie. Having a little kiss from the front bull there. Ending up a pretty good spot in little front. Kiss, little kiss in front. And now Celia Roussel calling for Anne Morissette to remove that Ontario bull. It still might not be enough. They have to move the jack, too. Here's Morissette's ball moving in. Right on, right through, and Ontario will win it. A rose is a rose is a rose, but it wouldn't smell as sweet as the Governor General's Rose Bowl, and Team Ontario is going to do it. Great, great bowling here by both Ontario and Quebec. Back and forth this entire game here. McKechnie sends that in. Ontario is the champion. What a match. They're still looking. There might be two points in there. Tessa's last bowl might have come and moved Quebec further away for Ontario to get even more points. Purely it academic at this point. It's just for the final outcome, but Ontario will go away with another win. That being said, we need to see what the other Ontario and Quebec teams did as well, because it's cumulative, right? This is true. So the points, I guess, do, they do matter if the other Ontario and Quebec game that happened further down the green was close. Well, it's, looks like it's two Ontario. Looks like two. 
They're double checking. Might be three. That would be the first. It's always been ones or twos this entire game. It looks like three for Ontario. It is three for Ontario. Quebec needed three to tie. Ontario gets it, and they win 13-7. The final here in the Governor General's Rose Bowl from the Highland Park Lawn Bowling Club here in the nation's capital. Wow, what a game. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll come back and talk to our Rose Bowl champions after the break. Gabriel Pizza, proud supporter of local sports. Gabriel Pizza, home of the bigger, better pizza. Now available online at gabrielpizza.com. A 13-7 victory, Team Ontario over Team Quebec in our featured game at the 92nd Annual Governor General's Tournament. We're here with uh, Team Ontario winning skip Tessa McEachern. And uh, Tessa, you won this game, but you didn't win the Rose Bowl. How does that work? It works because it's cumulative points. It's, it's how both teams perform. And the, the Quebec uh, A team, although we lost but only four points, they did gain more points in the second game to get a cumulative total. I think it was something like 59 points. That they, and so they won the, the Rose Bowl. They yes. won the Rose Bowl. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the game that we saw. Uh, it was a real skips battle wasn't it you and Anne were both throwing darts all day that's right and Anne is very very good uh, I believe she's uh, she's up there fifth in Canada uh, in terms of her bowling skills and uh, yes we were trying to outwit each other and uh, work in the backfield uh, and what mm -hmm. the bowls were doing in the backfield and trying to stop uh, an accumulation of bowls and points well there was a, a a tremendous amount a little bit of everything in that match uh, was what was your game plan coming in uh, our game plan coming in was actually we were going to go for long bowls and then we discovered that they were just as good at long bowls as we were at, and sorry long jacks as we were so we mixed up we, we started mixing up medium short long jacks and and this is what you do in, in Lawn bowling is different from curling in that respect, in that you can use the jack in strategically and, um, and you can bounce it over, bounce it in the ditch and control it. So that's what you're trying to do. Well, you wore a couple of hats for this tournament. Logistically, what was it like putting this Governor General's tournament together this year? I started in January. And that was and that was about parking and uh, discussing it with the broader district. It was um, it's been ongoing and it's been a challenge, and uh, the support has been great. It really has. The district uh, has survived COVID very very well, uh, and especially Highland Park, and we we were just delighted. Um, and the other club, Galetta, they had the play downs, um, and which made it all very manageable. Fantastic. Uh, do you have any, any, did you come in with any preconceived notions and, and are you satisfied with the way things went? Oh, I would have loved to have won. Of course <laughs> I would have loved to have won. And I thought we, we might have had a chance, but then the, the, the Quebec A side came, came through very strong in the second game because they had had an opportunity to work our greens and, and, and so they won through very well. Well, you deserved win. Well, you uh, you used home field advantage very well in a 13 to 7 victory yeah, over Team yeah, Quebec. We were, we were really pleased by that win. Very pleased by that win. Well, congratulations on a successful event. Congratulations on your win, and thanks for allowing us to be part of it. And thank you for being here and uh, bringing lawn bowling to the broader public.